This episode of An Unexpected Podcast is brought to you by Steph Arps. Thank you. Hello, friends, and welcome to An Unexpected Podcast. I'm Ez. And I'm Wayne. And we're talking Tolkien. Sorry, I'm still partying. We're coming to you from the Shire of America, the beautiful state of Ohio, and of a little village called Amanda. Mm. Uh, this week we'll be covering two towers. Um, mm. The departure of Boromir as we uh, take off on this journey through <laughs> Middle Earth. Wow, can't read. You may wonder why. Excuse me. Why we sound like uh, you know a couple of hobbits at breakfast time? It's because we're a couple of hobbits even eating dessert. You know what I mean? In the evening, and yes, <laughs> that's moist. It is. That's actually. moister than any Chinese buffets windows I've ever seen. So let's tell the folks what we're eating. We are eating. So, uh, guys, we had a little party this past weekend, and we're still partying hard. It was one of the best times of our lives. It was amazing. Yep. But our beautiful wife Goldberry, Sarah, worked so hard to create this gorgeous cake all right yeah that was sort of a replica of bilbo's from the films big tall white iced with strawberries all over the place yeah had that whole party had tons of good food amazing people right a lot of you came out and uh you know never got around to eating the cake so <laughs> it's great it sat in the fridge since saturday <laughs> I, mean, I was actually kind of worried about digging into it but it tastes fine no it tastes great really good actually yeah, yeah. Gold, uh, honestly, Goldberry was just like, "Don't eat that." And I'm yeah, like, Are you kidding me? Come on, of course we're gonna eat it. You know, that's it's some fuel. Sure for way that. to you know get me to eat it. That's so right. Tell me not to. Yeah, baby, we're getting so. we're getting into a new book. We need a we need a sugar high. We actually kind of I don't know what's going on with Ezra guys, but he is on. He might have pounded some sugar before he got here because he's already on a high. He's ready to go. He's amped. I mean, he's been shouting. Uh, we've had to calm the whole neighborhood down. It's a yeah. Wednesday night. People go to bed at about six o'clock around here, and he's yelling from the windows. Right, right. I was kind of worried that we would be, you know, um, since we're podcasting on a, on a Wednesday, that I mm-hmm. wouldn't be as amped. But I mean, it's 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 two towers, and so like I'm so excited yeah. to get started. Yeah, and it feels like you know we had a couple a different format for a couple weeks, and we were kind of comparing uh, book to film, book mm-hmm. review, all mm-hmm. that good stuff. And now it's like we're into two towers. Yeah, and I just posted something in the group. People were super amped about it, um, and just re- I read the chapter twice. Mm-hmm. Um, this week, just sort of getting prepared, and we were going back over it again mm-hmm. uh, with fine tooth uh, comb, and mm-hmm. I'm just excited. So, which is cool with a shorter chapter, you can kind of you can kind of go yeah. through it more, right? And do some you know background research and stuff too, a little more easily than for a long longer chapter, right? Um, but yeah, it's, it's cool too because it kind of felt like we were on one. You know, through this journey, we've had a lot of action, a lot of tension, a lot of drama, and then a period of downtime, some rest. A lot of action, a lot of drama, period of downtime. So it's almost like we've had a, you know, past few weeks we've been like in Rivendell or something, you know, yeah. or yep. Tom Bombadil's house. And now we're probably more excited than they were to, <laughs> to get back on the adventure. But um, we're back in it. Here we go. Here we are. Yeah. Sort of thing, you know? Here yeah. we are. Here we are. So yep. uh, absolutely jazzed. We actually have a lot. I mean, in those several weeks, we have so many more listeners. Um, and mm-hmm. so I just want to say thank you to everybody. Super excited to have so many more people on and I know people were getting revved up uh, for for two towers uh, some of you kind of you know said like all right I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the reading and it's been a little quiet yeah um, and so I don't know I think the it's upper just, population is like is like bunnies man it's growing like bunnies it's awesome just it's, it's incredible so you know welcome engage I'll, I'll, yeah. we have some really good uh, vocal leaders in the group and that are they're real positive and so mm-hmm. um, it's good to see them you know getting back Getting us ready for two towers and just, I can't wait. So, well, you know. here we are. You don't have to wait anymore. Right, but, let's do it. <laughs> uh, quick table of contents real quick before we start. We have an uh, amazing a lament for Bordor uh, and then also some cool Patreon details later on. We'll put it at the end. So if you don't want to hear it, you don't have to. Mm-hmm. But some cool stuff you might want to stick around and listen to. Also some t-shirt details. So that flagship, um, at, by this point, I'm sure you've seen it on Facebook or Instagram, the Unexpected Podcast flagship t-shirt. That's going to be made available um, for people to order. If you don't want to be on Patreon, you can still get that that shirt. And uh, we'll have details about that coming up later. So right. let's do some quick counsel, my brother. Yes, friend. How uh, are you? I'm fantastic. Good. And, uh, you know, I, I said this at uh, when I first showed up, the idea that uh, Eric Warren in this chapter, everything seems to be going wrong for him. Mm-hmm. Right? And so you have those days. And oh, yeah. I had one of those days. 
but nothing can get me down. I'm like, I, I, I everything was going wrong. Uh, I had a couple yeah. kids come, come back in at the end of the day and just say, you know, thank you. We really appreciate yeah. what you did today. And I can't go into details and stuff, but it was just one of those things where it was nice to have that uh, at the end of the day. And then really even without that, I mean, I, I love my kids and, and I love what I do, but uh, I was ready to go. I was ready to hit the yeah. road. I like to listen to the book on the way down here to your place and uh, just been just been really excited. So we had uh, recently the party. I'm exhausted still for yeah. the party. Yeah. Have not gotten the sleep that I thought I was going to get on Sunday Mm-mm. or Monday night or Tuesday, Tuesday night. night. So or it's tonight just, or tonight. I'm going <laughs> to super late tonight. So yeah. whatever, you know, Who cares? it's all worth it. It's all yeah, worth it. Yeah, it really the party is. was amazing. Um, so we're blessed. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm happy because the Browns are one, one and one. The, the, the dry spell has ended in Cleveland, you know, yeah. Ohio, we're all mm-hmm. happy. Uh, this is us is back on. Life's good, man. We're starting okay. to feel like fall here, you know, it's a little chillier, a little right. We had some rain at the long expected party, which we was did. you know what? Couldn't keep us down, man. Couldn't keep no. us down. It was an amazing maybe we we're gonna play some uh, a chat around the fire later, aren't we? That we yeah. had. What were you calling that? I a chat around the fire. <laughs> I think is what I was calling it. I don't know. So anyway, um, we we had the party and we, we weren't gonna do any recording. We were just gonna stay in the moment, enjoy it. But we were sitting around the fire and we were having some great conversation. Just yeah. great conversation. And so no I won't any spoilers, you'll just hear it all. But we're gonna plop it in the episode coming up and yeah. and you'll be able to hear have a little ear at that conversation. It was yeah. just so cool. Yep. Um, yep. So for sure. Yeah. Life's great, man. Life's good. Okay. That's awesome. It's good to hear. Um, yeah. No, it, as you said, it's, it's fall weather and I, it's my favorite time of year. Mm-hmm. So I am stoked. We've got your backyard ready to go. Yeah, uh, so banner's I mean, still up the, the banners. We've got the lights still up everything. So yeah. it's like, uh, I'm, I'm leaving my amp out there so we can, you yeah. know, play some music and stuff. Absolutely. I tell you what, when we were playing those, uh, that soundtrack in the backyard yeah, <laughs> earlier in the a, day. It was magical. Unfortunately, everybody didn't get to hear that because yeah, I just had my, my yeah. loud box in the back of the yard. And it was mm-hmm. just like, you know, the soundtrack, man. Yeah, I know. For hours. I know. It was fantastic. Just setting stuff up and the music playing. It was, it was yeah. magical. Felt like you were there. Magical. So, really but we, we, well, we were there. <laughs> well, I, sort of. So, okay. <laughs> All, All right. right. Drop some eaves? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's get into it. So uh, we have some... Uh, interesting uh, developments regarding the TV show. Not so much with the TV show, but this is really cool. I just I stumbled upon this today, and then I saw that our, our buddy Jake Hodgson had actually um, um, posted this in the group or the page. I can't remember exactly which one it is. Um, old War Hammer Time. Uh, he posted this interesting thing that's talking about a, a massive multiplayer online role playing game that's going to go along with. Ezra, mm-hmm. go along with the new TV show. Wait, is it what? The title of the article is New Lord of the Rings Multiplayer Massive Massive Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Game, MMORPG, might come with its TV series in 2021. So maybe it might not go along with, but they're timing the release around the, around same, the same time. time. Okay. Uh, so we've seen other, uh, oh crap, what is it? Lord of the Rings Online was a really big one yep. that came out, I mean, a while ago around... Uh, oh gosh, dude, I can't remember. Around the time that the movies were coming out, actually, mm-hmm. and then something happened, and I, I don't know, it was taken off, and then it got put back on as like this free version, and you can get on there now. I think people in the group have talked about this. Yeah. I don't really know because I have had to stay away from it because I'd probably get sucked in. Yeah. Um, actually, my buddy Mark Redenauer showed me. Uh, we went and visited him a, a summer ago, and uh, we spent hours on it and we were like wow we should probably get off this this is <laughs> yeah we're gonna get sucked in so anyway yeah, it was an yeah. amazing immersive experience so um recently Ath- athlon athlon games studio um issued a statement saying that they will team up with the middle earth enterprises to create a large f- uh, free large scale and multiplayer online game based on tolkien's lord of the rings series Wow. So it sounds like it's going to be kind of a, mm, I don't know, update, uh, better version uh, than, than what we've had previously. Okay. Um, okay, here you go. Taking advantage of its inevitable public influence, a brand new Lord of the Rings online game has also begun research and development along with the TV show, aiming to replace the old Lord of the Rings online. Mm-hmm. So anyway, just really interesting. It to- goes on to talk about, give you a, a little more details on that. It's potential release date of 2021. So that's kind of cool. Another place that we uppers could probably hang out. Yeah, I was going to say Corey Olsen often does that um, now on some of the servers. 
That's you right. Know? And it's actually really neat. You can just kind of free roam, you know, explore yeah. different areas Dude, and stuff. It's amazing. It's, it's, yeah, you get lost. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yes, you do. So, you can create your own character and all right. of the. Yeah. We should. Oh, my gosh. We could actually do it now, so like, like leading into this. Uh, especially now that we have Discord up and running, you know, we could get we could get on there and, and possibly do some fun stuff. Yeah, and I was just thinking, like, I don't know if you can build things in those worlds. Mm, I don't remember. Or buy buy things. We could buy a mm-hmm. uh, one twenty two West Main Street somewhere, maybe. <laughs> Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Yeah, meet yeah. In the meet in the dining room. Yeah. Um. So anyway, that's a cool little nugget. Check that out. Uh, like I said, it's on the Facebook group. Um, and then the Tolkien biopic. You know, still no release date. Um. You know, just don't forget the sniffing, guys. Keep sniffing for that one. I do promise that that is a, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying, oh, it's it's clickbait. It's not a real movie. It's all farce. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I really don't think so. I, I think that it's taken a long time to get the budget for whatever reason. I don't know if maybe because they're working with the Tolkien estate and it's taking a long time. They want to make okay. sure it's uh, a fair representation because they're notoriously so meticulous. Yeah. But, um. Looking forward to that. One of these days, hopefully, we'll get to see it. Um, yeah, yeah. A uh, little update on the Billy Boyd World Tour. You saw that uh, Jessica Denboer had had it uh, out yeah. in uh, awesome pics. Yeah, out, out in Montana. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. Beautiful. Jeez, uh, beautiful mountains. She took it on the top of something, uh, some some overlook, and you can see the mountains in the distance and the right. city below. Missoula. Yeah. Is it Missoula? Missoula. Yep. Um, and anyway, we shared that, and guess who? Guess who retweeted it? Beautiful old Billy Boyd, our favorite Hobbit. You know, he says, "Look at all the places I've been." Yeah. yeah. So um, it was most recently in the hands of. It went from Jessica to Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got some pictures. I actually need to do that tonight to post his pictures that he has um, taken of Billy. So those will be coming. Uh, you probably see him by the time you listen to this. And um, uh, from there, it's moving on. So from Jeremiah, it's moving on. He's gonna, you know, uh, be sending it on to the next recipient and. We'll keep Billy uh, traveling around the world. So yeah, I think it's going, uh, yeah, it, gets, it should be with Charlotte next. I hope. Yes, yes, that's right. So. I don't know if we're keeping it secret or not. Keeping it safe. No, well, I think we're Charlotte's gonna, out there now. It's going to be there. in. It's going to be in Charlotte. Uh, yeah. So and then uh, with Charlotte in Charlotte. Charlotte lives in Charlotte, doesn't she? I, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'll check that one. <laughs> but no, I uh, and so hopefully people will take some photos. You know, have some fun with it, and then um, hit us up. We'll send you the next address and keep yeah. it moving. Yeah. So, okay. Yep. Billy we're about it. to actually after I believe after her. I've got one or two more, and then I'm about to send it way across the uh, pond. So, the other pond. The moon? So, <laughs> the moon. Yep, that's the one. That's no uh, moon. That's the one. Uh, okay, so in other corners of Middle Earth, uh, is this where we wanted to kind of discuss maybe the party and, and share some yeah, of the conversation? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Why okay, don't you walk so, me into it, you storyteller? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, we basically were just, again, sitting around the fire and uh, we had, oh my gosh, we had Nick there. We had Curtis and Kelly. Um, we had Susie, Ethan, Erica. Uh, Xavier, Erica, mm-hmm. um, our good friend uh, David. Um, we had Swish Mike and Charles. Flick there. Mike Charles. We had Bill we had, Joe Baggins himself. Yeah, Bill Joe was there. My mom and dad were there. My mother in law, Gina, was there for a while. Right. Helping uh, us Hillary out. was there. Yeah. Sarah was there. Yeah, my sister Sarah my was there. Goldberry was there. Right. Winnie was walking around on Everywhere. two feet smoking yeah. a pipe at one point yeah <laughs> my little uh, my little crotch fruit right a beautiful angel <laughs> yes yes she was uh so we had we had we had uh you know and it rained you know so i had a couple other friends who were going to come and they just sort of uh they weren't really sure you mm-hmm. know rain kind of got to them so yeah. got you down i guess yeah. Yeah. but didn't get us down and uh we had some good conversations around that fire mm-hmm. uh, it was getting so good that i kind of thought you know, let me just pull up the mics. I had everybody sitting there. Everyone's real, you know, chill. It had stopped raining. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to do some different things, but the rain really. Um, thankfully, David saved our, saved my equipment <laughs> out in the rain. Yeah, that, uh, that we was were running around everywhere. You, yeah, we were running around everywhere, and so and um, and your sister was the one who was like, "Hey, uh, we have um, <laughs> tents that we could throw up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we could get on because one of them was hers. Outside. She was like, "So let's use that. How That's about right. we use that? So, That's right. Uh, but anyway, so just go ahead and take a listen here. This is just a quick tidbit. Uh, of our conversation all right guys we're sitting around the fire here in uh the shire of america the beautiful state of ohio a little village called amanda oh my gosh goldberry just almost caught on fire watch your watch your sash honey (laughs) thank you that was a clone eastwood move there um and we're just sitting around the fire we're getting to know our uh our friends and Mm -hmm. fellow uppers and it's it's been an amazing conversation it's uh me the flannel wizard ezra right now and nick is on the other 
on the other microphone there. The mic is hot. Nick has it in his hand. How's it going? Nick's hot on the mic. I'm doing pretty well. Yeah. It's a little chilly, but we'll get this fire going. Get That's right. Going. That's yes. Right. That's good. Well, so Nick had said something really interesting. Nick is, um, if, if you doubled my intelligence and then quadrupled my intelligence. <laughs> Right, and then yeah. sort of put it in a microwave and blew it up even more like popcorn. You might get half of how smart he is. So he's ta- that was a half. That was kind of an insult. Put it in the microwave, dude. It expands things exponentially. You know what popcorn does in the microwave? Okay, there's my intelligence. Good <laughs> lord, just kidding. I don't know. Um, anyway, he was talking about the connection. He was connecting string theory to the beginnings of Middle Earth. Okay. I just want him to talk about it and go because I think it's worth sharing. I think it's valuable, <laughs> and it blew it blew our mind. Kurt and I are sitting here like. Could you say that uh, in just uh, Morse code, something we can understand? <laughs> yeah. Hobbit terms, yeah. So, so let's hear this. String theory. Okay, so on a real basic level, the idea of string theory is that everything in the universe, the smallest level you can get down to are these what they call strings. And the vibrations of those strings are what cause matter to come into being. It determines... <laughs> You know, that frequency Mm -hmm. determines what that piece of matter is, Okay, essentially. And you've got all these religions around the world that have all kind of come down to this idea of the creation coming out of being from either music or words. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, in the beginning was the word, Mm -hmm. and it was spoken. That's what brought the world into being. And you get this in the Silmarillion in a really beautiful way where... I knew you'd love this. This is great. (laughs) Iluvatar brings creation into being with this music. Yeah. And to me, it is one of the most beautiful creation stories that's out there. Yeah. Uh, Nick, I don't want to do a sidebar here, but you you said Iluvatar. You meant Tom, right? Tom Bombadil. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Do not (laughs) I'm just joking. I'm just joking. (laughs) Yeah. Kurt, would you like to say something next? We, can we pass the mic? Is that yeah, what we're yeah, going to th- do I here? I think we're just going to kind of around the fire here. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can stretch it all the way over there. So, Kurt, <laughs> tell us, uh, give us a, an anecdote of your Tolkien story, or uh, how did you uh, how did you come into this into this uh, universe of Tolkien, or you know, what do you love about the book club? Okay, sure. One of those. Uh, I I have yet to write in a Tolkien story because I don't know that I have one, but. That's a Tolkien story in and of That's itself. That's a story. Come on. Indeed. Uh, I was, I mean, I was 18, 19 when I saw the first movies. Okay. Uh, all three of them had already been published in the theaters. Yeah. Uh, I picked up the DVDs at a local store on a discount and uh, thought I'd kill some time one day and watch them. And changed your life. And I thought Legolas was badass. <laughs> you are very elven, if I can so. say. I mean, of, of everyone sitting around here, I think he's probably the most elven. I'd what say, do you think? Yeah, I would say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do you love about Legolas? Michael Vaughn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because he rides shields down the stairs <laughs> at Helm's right. Deep. I mean, the same thing everyone loves about Legolas. He never he's, misses, and yeah, he never runs out of arrows. He's a badass. And he yes, leaps he onto the... Uh, Back of moving horses with ease. It's pretty cool, isn't it? He's great. Oh, One-handed. and he takes down Muma Kyle. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yes, he mm-hmm. does. Pretty easily too. So, um, uh, but anyways, that was my introduction to to Tolkien and yes. the world. Um, and then uh, I, I watched all of the uh, special features, yep. of course, yep. repeatedly. Uh, and fell in love with all of the characters, and yeah. eventually decided that um, that I was Sam. Wow, really? Because I felt like Sam was the true hero of the story. Absolutely is. So with no knowledge of the mm. books uh, and and being as young as I was, um, I felt like Frodo was designed as the hero of the movies, but ultimately he failed in the end. But Sam <laughs> was true. Yes. Yeah. And then in the end, the, home, the, 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 the movie finished on Sam. And yeah. he was the true hero. Yeah. So, wow. I always he's the one thought to of myself to be. as Sam because he was so humble. Yeah. And true and loyal. Yeah. That 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 was that was who I connected with the most. And then later, uh, after I had kids of my own, I I I thought of Sam and the way he, you know, was with his kids and yeah. and and I don't know. I just. That's my connection right there. That's beautiful. I like to I, I like to think of uh, 
uh, my two little boys yeah. as little little gamgees and that's awesome we're yeah. just doing our thing in the shire all right kelly uh, would you like to oh, share brother. your love of freddy krueger can we or? just <laughs> can we just get to know you a little bit kelly can we just say you know that you're just it's just wonderful that you're here you and, are wearing uh, an aon shirt yes i am but that's because kurt bought it for me now see that's not the way it was presented when she came here yeah Nor hardcore feminist man she was she was she well was she, showing it off. she was she really was, cool yeah she yeah. she was very confident that she, that she knows who Awen is. Yeah, yeah. She was oh, I do know. I do know who she is. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Um, I know yeah. a few of the characters. Okay. Yeah, and you've seen Which, all the movies, right? I have repeatedly. And okay. Has, <laughs> has Kurt, against her will, not by choice. <laughs> um. So I I can honestly say that I would not have picked them up on my own free will. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But being honest. But um, I do recommend we watch them from time to time so that Kurt will stop moving around the house and sit down <laughs> for a little while um, so I can be lazy <laughs> and so I know it will work because if I offer up to watch the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit or something he'll sit down and so then we can just kind of chill for a little while Wow! so wow. it's kind of my go-to sometimes it benefits both of you it does. Really? Yes. I mean, that's that's the best kind of What a great there is. management strategy. That is <laughs> fantastic. That is so good. <laughs> Susie. Susie's got a, a tired boy on her lap. Yeah, she I do. does. I have my own hobbit child <laughs> <laughs> on my lap. That's wonderful. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. How's it going over there? You're like way over there. I can't even hardly see you. I'm like looking around Nick <laughs> here. Like, pretty good. Glare in her glasses. Isn't that like you're communicating? Yeah. Can't you communicate that way? <laughs> right. That's typically. Between the both of you? Right, yeah. <laughs> Susie, I, so for um, uh, everybody pretty much brought food uh, today. We had I the potato, potato cook-off. And her presentation, uh, she's got to win presentation award. Because oh she, my had, goodness, she yeah. brought you know uh, characters, like uh, the toy characters to go along with the dishes. And then not only that, but printed off the recipes. She goes, she walks in and she goes, I'm such a mom because I brought the recipe in case <laughs> yes. anyone wants it. In case anyone like, has allergies, I had to have the whole that's recipe. That's right, that's right. Yes. She was she was concerned about that as well. Yeah, um, and made these uh, uh, cookies that had tater cookies, potato oh, chips those great. in them. We can yeah. rename them potato cookies if we want. Potato cookies, yeah. just yeah, one of the coolest things I've ever tasted before in my life. So, Susie, you do um, hair and makeup for I weddings, do. and you actually came. <laughs> I do. My my company is called I Do. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Who would pawn would pick a pocket? <laughs> so I always you, say like I do, ha. Huh? And you I actually do. came from a wedding this morning. I had a wedding at five forty five this so morning. See, yeah, look at that dedication. And then I had a second wedding right after that one. Did you wow. hear that? So I did two weddings. Then I went home, picked up the boys and came here. That's so unreal. I think I've had a total of four hours drive time so far today. Wow. But I only only live like an Less than two hours away. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> and she baked all this food for us. Strawberries and cream bread. Which Strawberry, is yes. No. So there's so there's strawberry and cre strawberries and cream bread. Yeah, walk us through the whole um, menu with the uh, little character of Frodo. Yeah. Then we have um, Bilbo's tea cake, which is like a lemon cranberry uh, pound cake, I guess. Yeah. With Bilbo. Yeah. Um, there's potato cookies with oh, Sam. Gosh, so good. And then there's the dwarven uh, women's pumpkin cake. With Gimli, because oh, yeah. you know I don't have any women dwarfs. Yeah, they're we hard picking, to find. Uh, we were picking the beard hairs out of our. <laughs> you can't tell them apart. It does say on there no beards are required That's for right. the cake, right. so it's cool. Anyone can eat it. On to Erica. Hello, Erica. Erica, you are staying in the Dumford house. True story. Uh, you almost got eaten by a spider. That's that's also true. <laughs> Sounds like you took a jog in Amanda, and um, it could, dare I say Amanda took your breath away. No. Oh. Um, yeah, because I was running at the time. <laughs> no, I uh, really ran through the town. It didn't take long. <laughs> um, I ran up to the high school. That took a little longer. So that was nice. And what do you think of Amanda? Is well, it really the really cute. Shire of America? I, I would say so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going to yeah. put that on a t-shirt. Erica said so. <laughs> Erica said so. So <laughs> Erica <That's> approved. Awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, anything else, you know, like your, fa your favorite, uh, I don't know, your favorite memory from fellowship or. Oh, gosh. Did you want to share, perhaps? We, oh. we, just, we kind of just went over some of those, I think. Uh, yeah, but. and mine was totally Tom Bombadil. I love yeah. that. Um, what an enigma, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm like, the ring, you know, doesn't affect him. Yeah. He's all like, hey, look at all the cool shit I can do with it. Right. Yeah. Sorry. 
Yeah. What, you um, have to break a rubber band, but you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Snap yourself. <laughs> so what do you really think about Tom Bombadil? He's the bomb. That's why his name is Tom Bomb. But deal. <laughs> okay. And he's the de- the real deal. Yep. Okay. Got oh, it. Oh yeah, the whole like Tom Bombadil is God thing. I think that sounds excellent. That's we do a really too. cool theory. We do too. So. Wow. I think next up uh, the Velvet Voice. The Velvet Voice here. I don't know why you keep saying that. God, just keep talking, dude. Um, David, tell us your favorite aspect of Middle Earth. You have a favorite book. You got a favorite character. What sucked you into this beautiful fantasy. Um, I don't know if I said that right. No, it was, it was fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Your deepest, darkest uh, secrets and thoughts Deep, there. Deepest, uh, darkest build secrets. build Joe out of it. How long do we have? <laughs> um, no, my, my mom was somebody who read to me every night before I learned how to read, and a little bit of everything. She tried to vary, not just like little kid books, but things I probably didn't need to have read to me at young age but i remember she read me the hobbit and it scared the living crap out of me when they got to Gollum, because i yeah. i have a very vivid imagination and um i can picture books pretty well which is why i can't always watch film film adaptations oh, yeah. uh-huh. um because i have a certain thought in my head of how Image. things are supposed to be yeah but i do remember when the movies came out and uh super excited to see them. I saw the fellowship in theater. I didn't see the the two towers or the return of the king until much later though. And wow. then uh after fellowship around that time I read I read uh, probably the first two books I, I would assume. Mm-hmm. And then uh kind of lolled around and eventually got to it much later but mm-hmm. Yeah, I did uh, appreciate when you guys started the podcast because it kind of, you know, got me back into it. I wanted to reread it again, and mm-hmm. um, you know how you forget things oh, yeah. over time. Yeah, yeah. and you know, I mean, like so I, much I, content too that you can exactly you can read it really, really well and still read it every year and pick up new things. Right, and I got the audio books, and you know, I yeah. listen to those at work, and yeah. I started listening to them again. I was like, man, I don't know if I like these movies as much anymore. <laughs> Just because of details sure, they left sure, yeah, out yeah. and, and things you know, change. things that they did differently. Yeah. And um, I still love the extended versions. They're still a good interpretation, but they're not necessarily correct. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of how I got into it. All right. So there was a glimpse of, of kind of the, the discussion we, we shared around the fire. Uh, it was a magical time. Um, it was still pretty, uh, you know, pretty damp. And despite that, we were we felt warm by the fire. Uh, yeah. Our hearts were warm. Um, there was another cool moment too. Uh, I won't share the full details just because it was it was special. You know, I want to keep it for that for the party, and you come next year and you can have have a special moment of your own. You know, but um, it was just cool. We were in a certain location, um, and we were all together, and it just kind of hit me what was going on. You know, we've always talked about. You know, we feel like we're, and, and a lot of you have said it feels like we're all in the same room, just having a discussion, having a book club together. That you know, though we're we could be thousands of miles apart, and and maybe a lot, you know, a lot of us will never ever meet, you know, mm-hmm. and um, uh, but just how it feels like we know each other so well, kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. And there was a moment that happened here like that, and I just thought, holy cow, this will, this will, forever, change my mentality. Every time we record, every time we come to you, and if you were there, you you know what I'm talking about that moment, and it was just it was an amazing experience and uh, one that I'm thinking about right now, looking around. Mm-hmm. So pretty cool, pretty awesome. It was, it was amazing to meet you and and uh, hear your guys' words and opinions and perspectives and points of view right in person. It, it was unbelievable. And have you in our in our home, you know, in our own little shire, our own little bag end. It's, it's crazy. Well, and I think mind blowing. Yeah, and, and and I that moment, I think you know we want to keep that that like like you said, yeah, reserved. But I do want to share one. Shouldn't other even moment. have brought it up. No, no, no. I think it's I think it's I think it's cool because it's something that like, you know, um, there's a meme out there where that where someone's like looking at uh, either a celebrity getting out or something. Maybe it was the queen or princess walking by or something. Are you calling yourself a queen? Uh, no, I, mean, I wish I was. Uh, but uh, and, and there's this. Uh, I think she looks like she's in her. You know, she, she's an outer elderly lady and everyone else has their phones out 
and they're turned Mm -hmm. looking through their phone at something. Right. Mm -hmm. And she was there in the moment. Yeah. And they were sort of like, that's, isn't that awesome? You know, exactly. Take a look at that. And that's what what it felt like to me is that like everyone was just here and in the moment. It was so Mm -hmm. cool. Um, so another, um, moment that was really interesting. I'm in the backyard. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I don't know I'm, what you're about to say. I'm, I'm pretty ta- excited. I'm talking to, um, cause I think we actually shared, this is one of our live videos that we, that we posted or whatever. So you guys probably saw this on the Facebook page, uh, or in the group and I'm standing there, um, with Kurt and Kelly mm-hmm. and I'm talking to them and I sort of, I see someone wandering into the backyard and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Who, who okay. is this I, was gentleman? Like, I don't know who this is. So this <laughs> must be someone who, you know, unexpectedly showed up. Um, and, uh, Nick Freeberg yeah. just shows up yeah. from Atlanta. Yeah. And, and you talk about a moment where I was like, wow. Okay. It's pretty cool to be there for the first meeting because, you know, Curtis and Kelly set this whole thing up where, you know, we've got things that we're signing each time that we show up. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it, I don't know. It was special. Yeah, it was. It was, it was really know. special, and it was. Uh, it was really. I don't know. I had hum- like humbling. Just yeah, an amazing experience. I had no. Sh- I had no shortage of my share of uh, butterbur moments as well. Um, my the, the biggest one was. Uh, I'm sure Jennifer is going to get a kick out of this when Jennifer Shepard showed up. Yeah, Jen. yeah. And um, I was like, I was because I had I had been pretty diligent to look at who was coming before, so that I I was prepared with sure. okay. Yeah. Who is who? And I'm terrible with names. I'm terrible with names. Right. I sometimes I'll go, oh, hey, buddy, or hey, you. And I just gave it away now. So if I say that to you, it's because I don't know your name. I'm getting better at just going, I can't remember your name. I'm terrible. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. What is your name again? Okay. It's me. It's not you kind of a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, so, yeah. you know, she was walking in with her cousin, Mackenzie. Yeah. And um, I was like, wait, no, actually her niece. niece her niece. niece. Yep. Right. But they could be. They look like cousins. Yeah. They're like four years apart. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't necessarily remember who these young ladies are mm-hmm. um okay all right uh how do i how do i go about this hey, hey guys you want some name tags right yeah and then we're inside um talking later and uh, i'm trying to get to know because i felt bad i'm like this is this is terrible this is terrible i feel like i you know i haven't um interacted with them the way i should because i don't know their names and i don't know how to come out and say hey what's your name by the way because i probably talked to them before and it and it came out and i was like oh my gosh I was like, this is Jennifer. And Jennifer had messaged me earlier. It was amazing. Um, asking if she could make um, blankets um, for Winnie and uh, the future crotch fruit um, yeah. who you know uh, is coming very yeah. soon. Future yeah. baby. And I was blown away by it. She messaged me and, and Sarah both. And we were like, oh my gosh, honor that you'd even want to do that. Yes, please. Like, you know. Right. Um, yeah. And she does this amazing uh, crocheting. Yeah. Beautiful. All these these bags and these burp cloths and these blankets. Unreal stuff. Yeah. And so we're having this conversation. She's like, I'm the one who messaged you. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you're Jen Shepard. She goes, yeah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> and we had a great laugh about it and yeah. it was it yeah. was awesome. But it was so cool to get over that. It's just funny. Like, I think sometimes we're, we're afraid to look stupid and we don't get over that bump. Right. And once you get over that bump of just being like, yeah, I'm a dumb person, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then it opens up just conversation and laughter and joy. Yeah. And one of the best times I had was just talking with talking with Jen. It was really yeah. really cool and seeing her creations and yeah. talking about talking to Mackenzie and seeing um, she she takes care of uh, the elderly, you know, and, yeah, and right, uh, right, right. SDNA and just just an amazing amazing group of people. I mean, yeah, I yeah. go on about about everyone. You know, right. Erica coming over and helping us out, right? Uh, helping us set up and then. Um, just just team hang, mom and Susie. Yeah, hanging out. Yeah, Susie Millhouse being the the team mom, bringing. Um, recipes for all the food that she brought and then, Unreal. and then staging it with with characters that you know yeah. belong to those those dishes and her you know her husband ethan who's who we didn't want to stop talking to no nah, he's gonna be a rugby star yeah um and then uh, little xavier uh who is one of the most mature little four-year-olds i've ever met he was yeah. hanging out with a bunch of goofballs yeah and uh yeah. had a blast right you know so and kurt and kelly were incredible and you know seeing oh, mike gosh. and david again and yeah old bill joe baggins it was right right it was awesome, man. I, I don't I know. know. It's overwhelming. Makes me makes me emotional. Just incredible. Right, right. It was really cool. Um, I also want to give a, a special thank you to, uh, I, I know some several of you, I put it in a post. Uh, I think it was Luca, uh, Matthew was out yeah, there. A couple yeah. other people did some really cool stuff on the 22nd mm-hmm. and just sort of like 
helped share us, that with us. Yeah, mm-hmm. helped us kind of share a moment in the Facebook group. And so I really, really appreciate that. Awesome. that. Yeah. It was really nice to see because everyone was kind of in the spirit. You know what I mean? We were. And it was we were really, together in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It was, and I kept, yeah. I, I kept seeing it on my phone when I had a chance to look at it. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is so cool yeah. that that's happening. You know, because yeah. we were trying to do some live stuff. The rain kind of got to um, our technology a bit, so we had to put it away. But uh, still really neat. And another, um, you know, kind of putting chase out here on the on on the spot but he spoke to me about possibly doing other meetups in different areas yeah you know and having some of you guys if we can't make it host a meetup Mm -hmm. you know and uh, he's like he's been kind of a a reporter in the field for us yes he has to to record a couple things we love chase i think also too okay so the chase listen to me this is for you bud i got a phone call from some some texas number Right when we were setting up for the party, and I think it may have been you calling me. I thought for a second it was like I don't know uh, a telemarketer or something. Yeah, I was yeah. like, and I and I put my phone away, and then it stopped ringing. And I was like, I bet that was Chase McKinney giving me a call. <laughs> so I'm sorry I didn't answer you. I'm not ignoring you. Um, you're you're amazing, dude. Uh, yeah. So apologies. I just I just we'll kind of registered. Back this right? Yeah. I'll give you a text in a second. I just registered now that that was probably him. Give me a call. There's old Butterbur again. There he is. One thing drives out another. <laughs> there he is. So uh, some fun stuff, guys. Yeah, Just we go on forever to... about it. Yep. Yeah. All right, my friend. I think uh, into anything... the reread. Yeah. Anything else there? No other business, master. Okay. All right. So um, yeah, I mean, last time you know, in in fellowship, uh, basically, uh, the breaking of the fellowship, man. Yeah. You know, it was uh, the bands breaking up. It was emotional for us because we got to the end of of, of the first book. Mm-hmm. You know, essentially, uh, the second book, and uh, it just, I don't know. Bands breaking up. We we knew um, sort of what had happened to Boromir, and yeah. uh, uh, I don't know. So so now we're we're this is uh, book three, chapter one, the departure of Boromir, yeah. and uh, we're going to start posting. Uh, hopefully after this chapter, we'll get back into some of those Facebook threads, mm-hmm. get that conversation going again. Um, we've we got it happening in different areas, so um, lots more to keep track of. But that's a good thing. I want people to feel like they can reach out to us, leave some comments. Uh, and know that you know we're going to as best we can yeah. uh, incorporate that into it's the part show. of the conversation, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, yeah, so like like I said last time, it was sort of an unraveling of the tapestry of <laughs> you know the fellowship, and it was it was hard to see. You know, we all we, we there was there were moments of chaos and and panic where you know the the members of the fellowship sort of went scurrying off, and Aragorn's trying to hold it all together, thinking, yeah. ah, yeah. you know, I, I'm failing. You know, this is chaos, like. Everyone looking looking for Frodo, and then Frodo and Sam head off, and yeah, they're all they're all broken up. So we um, open up here. So pretty much, you know, this is like one of the shorter, um, yeah, one of one of the shorter chapters I think we've ever yeah. read, and it, it might be one of the shorter chapters of the entire uh, entire book. Yeah, maybe you know. Yeah. Um, so it, you kind of look at it, and you think, yeah, there's not much here, right? But uh, look again, we we found a way. Look. Um, also, this is really interesting that, to bring up since we're into two towers now. Our uh, narrative kind of takes a different um, turn here. Yeah. You know, you look in the table of contents. All right, and we've got book three and book four for two towers. Book three is spent with Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, Gandalf. We're into Rohan. Right. Um, you know, there's some Saruman in there, and um, obviously Treebeard and uh, Merry and Pippin. And then we go all the way through to the end of, of their adventures. And then in book four, we come back to the beginning, right after the fellowship is broken, and we're with Frodo, Sam, yeah. and uh, maybe a little uh, Patterfoot behind him. Yeah. You know, maybe. Right. I don't know. I've never read before, so right. yeah. we're going to find out. We're so anyway, out. It's, this, it's this interesting way of they don't interconnect is what we're saying. Which, if you've read this book before, you understand that. But it's just it's such a cool way. I think... I think uh, who was it? Tom. Crap. Oh, gosh, that uh, biographer I love. Tom Shippey. Tom Shippey talked about how it's one of the most ridiculous things an author could do, right? To say, I'm going to leave, at the beginning of this book, I'm going to leave, you know, the character mm-hmm. who's my ring bearer for, yeah. what, 11 chapters? Yeah. I'm going to yeah. leave him. You're not going to hear from him. You're not going to know what's going on with him. You might hear hints, but you're not going to interact with him at all. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to wait that long to catch up with him and then go back in time. He was like, it, it shouldn't make any sense, but it does. Yeah. Because it parallels, you know, you're left in suspense this whole time. Right. You're living events as 
as they would have, you know, with the three hunters and Gandalf and, and Rohan and, and this, this climax with, uh, you know, Isengard. And you're, you're unsure of what's happening um, with your friends, you know, Frodo and Sam out there in the wilderness. What's going on with them? What, and, and then you're deciding what can we do based on that knowledge or lack of knowledge. So yeah. it's, it's an amazing way to build suspense and, and keep you reading and fill in the gaps later on. It's, it's brilliant. Yeah, well, so. yeah, it's like every chapter that you turn to, you keep yeah. thinking, when are we, what, you know, right. what's what, going on are, with are them? We, are we going to get back to them? You're like, yeah. you just don't know. And yeah. you keep thinking, maybe he's going to come back in like four chapters or five. Then you're like, well, yeah. it's a whole book, yeah. you know? And yeah. so it is very interesting and kind of neat. Yes, so, it is. Um, we have, let's see. Uh, oh, this is a nice little map that you put in here. This is cool. So I just pulled up the, the map that Lane shared with us. Uh, we have in our Google Doc, which I need to start sharing these again on our Patreon, uh, and maybe with people in the Facebook group, just uh, some links and things here. So uh, I want to share some of those. Uh, we actually had a, um, that's awesome, nice little forest. Yeah. Forest set up yeah. here. Um, we're going to talk a, a little bit about just the beginning of this chapter, and then yes. I think there's a... Um, there's a neat audio edition. Oh my gosh, there is. Yeah. So let's talk about this just in the beginning. The summary? Then, yeah, j just the first couple paragraphs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll go back, we'll talk about it, and then we'll listen to it. And we'll listen to it. Oh, yeah, I like is that. Okay? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, absolutely. So, you know, basically this starts off, um, we were kind of in, uh, we left Aragorn speeding, you know, like running around. Sam was with him. And it was mm -hmm. Sam who, in the, at the end of the fellowship, like, kind of stopped and had a moment, didn't mm -hmm. he? Yeah, that's right. You know, had that thought. And he seems yeah. to know Frodo the best. Yeah. And really thinks like his, you know, as to where his master uh, will be, where where would he go. Yeah. And in that moment of chaos, it's just, it's crazy to think that Sam had the clarity yeah. uh, to stop there. Yeah, absolutely. And think like a hobbit and think like his master and, <laughs> yeah. and figure out where he would go. You know, and that's that, amazing. It, it's, it's, this is the time of, of, of hobbits, you know? Yes. Uh, so really neat there. And so we have Aragorn around Amon Hen kind of um, rushing upwards uh, to see he's following the footprints, mm -hmm. right? And so what's difficult about that, what, what, what I think Sam does that's interesting is he, so Aragorn has to follow them. Like that's, he's a tracker, mm -hmm. right? So he's tracking him, you know, and he has to follow it through to the end. Mm -hmm. Whereas Sam can say, I'm going to take a risk here. Yeah. I don't need to follow those. <laughs> I, I don't need to know every step that he took. I know where he's going to be yep. eventually. Jumping to a conclusion. Yeah. Yep. And isn't that cool? That's such a neat little like like he doesn't need to follow the footprints. He can yeah. he knows uh, where they're going to end up at. Yeah. And so I thought that was really yeah. Like cool. you said, it goes back to how well he knows Frodo, doesn't he? Because yeah. even when they're talking about you know they're having that kind of discussion as to what Frodo should do, what he needs to do. Sam's the one who's right on with with what Frodo wants to do. You know that he wants to take it on his own. He doesn't want anyone else to be in danger. And even yeah. in that conversation, Sam was the only one who who knew his master's mind kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so, so as Aragorn is tracking him, I love this part. Hobbits go light. Yeah. And their footprints are not easy even for a ranger to read. It's crazy, I, man. I, I've always, you know, gr growing up really admired. And I, like what I love about hobbits is that going back to Bilbo, he can be a burglar because mm -hmm. number one, you know, Smog couldn't really didn't know his scent. And he also, they're light on their feet and they can yeah. go unseen if they wish to. Yep. You know? Back so, in the, one of my favorite uh, lines is back in book one. I think it's when they set out of the Shire. Talks yeah. about how they disappear like rustles in the wind. Yeah. And just, I just <laughs> always think about that. People are like, you know, yeah, hobbits right. aren't magical. They're little. It's like, no, man. No, they're like, yeah. they can throw stones that are lethal. That's right. You know, with the strength of lethality, they can, they can go unnoticed as, as any other creature. It's, Awesome, dude. It is. Yeah, it is really neat. So I love hard that. Hard to track. Um, I love they're hard to track. Yeah, and yeah. so uh, that, that's that's pretty neat. Um, the uh, in the wet earth, you know, he saw um, what he was seeking for. Uh, I read the signs all right. He said to himself, Frodo ran to the hilltop. I wonder what he saw there. And and I thought this was interesting. Can I ask you a question, dude? I love how you're just jacked up. I'm man. absolutely. I love <laughs> I'm sorry. It. I love it. <laughs> I'm I'm so ready. To hey, go. this is you. Ready. Uh huh. Uh huh. Usually, yep. I'm doing what you're doing right now, and you're right. <laughs> Keep it going. Come Keep on. it going. Come right. Rolling on. on second paragraph here. Right. No, but I uh, let's let's think here. So, what I was wondering is, is at the end of the last book, why is it that we're this close to Amonhen in that ancient seat, mm -hmm. and Aragorn didn't have the thought when they were all sitting around like wondering what to do that he didn't seek clarity, you know, or or seek a vision. 
I just kind of wonder. It's interesting it's that in question. the moment of chaos, he's there and he goes, ah, oh, I wonder. And he goes up. I just thought, boy, it's, I don't know, it's such an ancient place mm-hmm. that it's almost forgotten. And maybe as he's passing by, that makes sense. You know, you start to think how fate would move people and stuff. And mm-hmm. like, wow, he's going up, up to this ancient spot. Let me go see what I can see. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That but it's very interesting. Why, why you didn't think of that before, maybe? It, yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Unless he was... Unless it's just rumor and you don't really know yeah, what you're going to see there. Or he was just kind of... respect. At that point, he was respecting Frodo's privacy. You know, yeah. he thought he would he would go away and come back and they wouldn't even have the need to go up there. They would, they would, or maybe he was going to later, you know? Yeah, maybe Yeah, maybe he was... Maybe, yeah, when Frodo had made his decision and, and a new path needed to be sought, he would go up there and, and take a look around. Right. I don't know. That's a good question. I, I'm, I'm sure, let, let's say that they would have uh, set up camp that night and or even if they were going to move on before they went, I, I can yeah. see him going up there yeah. for a little bit and, and, and you know... Trying to see what's what it's all about, yeah. I guess. And maybe he's been there before. I bet he right, has. Right. Isn't so. it interesting too? Like, so I mean, we're talking about my favorite guy here, so I might as well Go wax poetical it. a little bit. Uh-huh. But um, he, we always see. I guess increasingly we've seen him less like this, but he always seems so calm and cool, and unshaken, yes. and tempered. Right. And now it's like I, I guess increasingly as we've gone on this journey, we've seen him more vulnerable. We've seen him more humanized. We've seen him more. Um, frustrated and kind of bewildered almost. And I love how we're seeing this here. He's almost kind of like frantic. He, he's, he's searching for Frodo. He's concerned about him. Uh, uh, can't, read it. can't read the signs. Then he, then he figures to go up onto um, Emmonhen. Can't see anything there, even when he's sitting in the seat. Uh, he feels, and then later he says, you know, everything I've done today has gone amiss, you know, with the events that happen. It's just interesting to see him, because they always, what do they always say? You know, um, uh, uh, the 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 best way to test your bag of tea is how it does in hot water. I, I don't know, something like is that. Is that what they say? <laughs> but <laughs> is that? I think I heard recently quarterbacks are like tea bags. You see what they're made of in hot water. So that's what I was thinking of. But anyway, you know, <laughs> under pressure, under pressure, yeah. your true character tends to come out. Yeah, yeah. Um, not always. I think sometimes that's uh, that's not true. But we're seeing him here. He's he is hesitant. He is um, uh, a little uh, befuddled, but he doesn't stop. He's not. He's not the kind of person who who gives up or or uh, becomes weaker. He just drives all the harder, even if something he does, um, he feels he goes goes wrong, and he continues forward. It's well, awesome, dude. Okay, I, I love have, it. I have, I have another question for you. So, yes. uh, as he's hesitating, it says he desired to go to the high to the high seat himself hoping to see there something that would guide him in his perplexities. Mm-hmm. Um, but the time was pressing. So he thought that. Yeah. But yet he still went. He still... And I know the tracks mm-hmm. were leading him there too. Yeah. So I guess it's okay to press on because mm-hmm. he saw the tracks leading in that direction. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he decides to go all the way to the top mm-hmm. and, and, and take a look. Yeah, even though he doesn't have time, you're right. Yeah, it's kind of... Man. Yeah, so before Gets we up get there. to the top... Yeah. I thought maybe we we would just maybe play um, go back and play that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Is it okay? Because no problem. There, there, we, you want to uh, give it some uh, background first, a little bit. Yeah, I think uh, Lane found this, and it's mm-hmm. a audio um, dramatization. Yeah, of, it's kind of like an audio book slash, but uh, but there's it's dramatized. There's some sound effects, and uh, he changes his voice and stuff. But it's cool. Actually, I thought of Megan. Uh, from Swish and Flick because she yeah. said she can't get into the Rob Inglis audiobook. Yeah. And I was sitting this morning. I had about 10, 15 minutes before uh, kids were coming or I needed to get stuff done. And I was like, I'm just going to, you know, audibly listen to the chapter, see what I can sure. find. Sure. And I pulled this up and I was like, okay, this isn't Rob Inglis. Let's take a look. And wasn't anticipating anything, anything um, memorable. But this, I don't even know uh, what, what's this guy's name. We don't even know if he finished his, it, do we? Did... I don't know. There's there's a bunch of chapters, but I I think there's some gaps in between. Um, and this was published back in tw- uh, actually, ironically, September twenty third, twenty sixteen. Um, Soundscapes audiobook is the YouTube channel. Just to put a little plug there, so you can go listen to it yourself. Just a little excerpt from the nonprofit Lord of the Rings audiobook I made, voiced and recorded with sound mixing and partial effects. Uh, designed by me. So there's some there's music from the from the movie. Yeah. Uh, there's sound effects. I can just go ahead and play it, but yeah, I, I, yeah. I really like it. Absolutely. So you yeah, guys can we'll check it take out a too. Listen here. Yep. Aragorn sped on up the hill. Every now and again, he bent to the ground. Hobbits go light, and their footprints are not easy, even for a ranger to read. But not far from the top, a spring crossed the path, 
and in the wet earth he saw what he was seeking. I read the signs right, he said to himself. Frodo ran to the hilltop, I wonder what he saw there. But he returned by the same way, and he went down the hill again. Aragorn hesitated. He desired to go to the high seat himself, hoping to see there something that would guide him in his perplexities. But time was pressing. Suddenly he leaped forward and ran to the summit across the great flagstones and up the steps. Then, sitting in the high seat, he looked out. But the sun seemed darkened and the world dim and remote. He turned from the north back again to north and saw nothing save the distant hills unless it were that far away he could see again a great bird like an eagle high in the air, descending slowly in wide circles down towards the earth. Even as he gazed, his quick ears caught sounds in the woodlands below, on the west side of the river. He stiffened. There were cries, and among them, to his horror, he could distinguish the harsh voices of orcs. Then suddenly, with a deep-throated call, a great horn blew, and the blasts of it smote the hills and echoed in the hollows, rising in a mighty shout above the roaring of the falls. The Horn of Boromir! He cried. He is in need! He sprang down the steps and away, leaping down the path. This is fate on this day. All that I do goes amiss! Where is Sam? As he ran, the cries came louder, but fainter now, and desperately the horn was blown. Fierce and shrill rose the yells of the orcs, and suddenly the horn grew ceased. Aragorn raced down the last slope, but before he could reach the hill's foot, the sounds died away, and as he turned to the left and ran towards them, they retreated, until at last he could hear them no more. Drawing his bright sword and crying, Elendil! Elendil! He crashed through the trees. Pretty cool, right? Dude, that's on. Pretty that is cool. actually super epic. I, yeah. I love the horn. I, I, it's, it's amazing. So, you know, yeah. Great sound so, effects, awesome yes. music, mm -hmm. uh, just really, really cool. So if you're looking for a little spin on, again, I don't, I don't know if he's done all the, uh, all the chapters. I didn't see them all up there, but check it out. Awesome, just awesome. Gets it, it captures a little more of the, um, the atmosphere and the mood and the emotion than than just the just the audiobook by itself does. So yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's in a different it, way, I guess. Yeah. yeah I, Cool. I like both. I mean, I like to yeah, be able to like listen absolutely. to that and then also go back and like literally take it word by word and pull it out and mm -hmm. you know, tease it out and mm -hmm. kind of, yep. you know, um, I don't know. It's amazing. But the sound of it is just so good. And I thought, what well, I'm, we're so oh, amped. There it is. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what? Oh my gosh. And he, you know, like there's that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's cool. Can you imagine just, just what he was feeling in no. that moment, you yeah. know, and that he's, he's, in, he's in need. Um, and he can sense it. He feels yeah. Something going um, wrong, amiss. He feels like something's happening. Yeah. And so... Again, fate. It's almost like no matter what... His, I'm sure he's feeling this way. No matter what his decision, uh, he's just kind of doomed this day. Yeah. He's doomed yeah. to do the... You know, to make the wrong decision or whatever. Or fail, I guess, really, is how he... He sees himself failing as a leader here. You know, he's supposed to keep this... You know, in Gandalf's stead, he's supposed to keep this fellowship together. That's right. Yep. And, and on this day, it all falls apart. Yeah. No yep. matter what he does, no matter, you know, even though he's in every step, he's trying to do the right thing. It just, you know, it, I, it, I think it almost redefines how we, how we see failure, what failure is. You know what I mean? Uh, right. It makes you kind of look at that a little close, more closely. So, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Crazy. I, I wanted to listen to the whole bit there, but I wanted to go back uh, just, to oh, the, yeah. to, just to the part on where he's at the seat. Yeah. Uh, and so he's sitting in the high seat. He looked out, but the sun seemed darkened. And the world dim and remote, he turned from the north back again to north and saw nothing save the distant hills, unless it were that far away he could see again a great bird like an eagle high in the air, <laughs> descending slowly in wide circles towards the earth. There's so much there. There's so much there. And, and, and I'll be honest with you. I think, imagine it. You spent about 45 minutes on just I that did. line. So let's talk. Imagine if he would have continued watching. What would he have seen? Would or there if he had have never gone more? up there. Or if he would have never gone up there. Um, what is it that he sees? What is what is going on there? And we talked about, you had talked about how 
um, you know, Gandalf is brought back, who Gandalf has sent to watch the, the, the skies in this area and stuff, you know. So um, I think that's definitely something that uh, caught my attention. Yeah. It made me want to kind of well, think. Well, your connection to Gandalf, because I, I always. I thought I, to myself, been... is that Gandalf? Hmm. First of all, so, in, okay, and in, in, in people are going to think I'm crazy, and I, it's all right. It's no, okay. I think you're right on. I, I thought in two ways here. Is that just Gua here, you know, mm-hmm. uh, doing this thing, mm-hmm. right? Or is that in some ways actually Gandalf, mm-hmm. okay? Um, it appeared. I mean, he wasn't sure, and he's interrupted in his thought, and then he has to, uh, even as he gazed, his quick ears caught sounds in the woodlands below on the west side of the river. And that's when he stiffens and he has to move on. He doesn't have time to really take in this sight. Mm-mm, and process so what he's saying. No, it just, he doesn't. It's one line that we missed. I think even in my first read and I came back a second time and we were talking again uh, here at the table. And I was like, what is that? What is it that yeah, he sees know, there? Dude. You know? And so I was, um, and I, and I don't typically do this lane. Is this okay? If I, yeah, what are you doing? Ju- I don't even know just, what you're about to do. Just going to want to, Jump ahead just a little yes, bit here. Yes, no, I think you should because this is this is cool. Like not proof, but just sort of, it supports this idea. Well, and I don't know how this uh, necessarily connects. I mean, I, I it, well, it connects because I thought of Gandalf, and and I think we you, you thought of Gua here, and we, we talked about how. You see, I actually thought in my mind I was you. I told oh, you. Oh, you said it was. Yeah, I thought it was like maybe he's he's seeing this big bird, and we haven't figured out what the fell beasts are. I gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so I was thinking maybe it's a uh, you know it's a fell beast with a a black rider ring wraith on on top, and it just it's so distant that at a distance it would look like an eagle. You know what I yeah, mean? The right. this great winged creature. But now the more you're talking about this and the fact that he saw it to the north. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, back towards the it, misty it's mountains. It's descending. It's descending. It's descending. Is it? Um, is it an eagle picking somebody up, or is it the spirit of delivering somebody? Is it a spirit? Exactly. I just, man. So. Later on, I don't and, typically jump ahead in chapters yeah, here, like but, this, though. but in the white in the white rider, uh, once we come back to Gandalf, it actually says something very interesting. Wait, um, Gandalf comes back? Huh? Gandalf comes back? What? No. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Um, so uh, he's he's talking to I won't say who, right? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. We're gonna pretend like we don't know. Uh, the ring now had passed beyond my help or the help of any of the company that set out from Rivendell, very nearly. It was revealed to the enemy, but it escaped. I had some part in that, for I sat in a high place and strove with the dark tower, and the shadow passed. Then I was weary, very weary, and I walked alone. I walked. I walked along in dark thought. So, anyways, he he sat in a high place and he and he strove with the dark tower, and just prior to Aragorn coming to this the spot. Um, you know, Frodo had <laughs> just barely gotten away mm-hmm. from this eye, mm-hmm. you know, and it all being revealed. And then it's something, I don't something, know. I think it's really interesting. Remember, and something, God, this is crazy. So whether it, it could even just be this psychic connection or not, I don't want to say psychic, sorry, this telepathic thing between, gosh, dude, this is bad. See, I need to look up the timing as to what, what state. Gandalf was in when this happened. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. also thinking that could also sitting in a high seat or from from a great from a great height. He, def, you know, threw the smote the Balrog down on Zaraxagil, that mountaintop, mm-hmm. that yep. that uh, fortress on the mountaintop. Yeah. So that could also be that. And I'm thinking too. So Agreed. so what put that thought in Frodo's head of remember he he did, it's like it came to him all of a sudden at the last second. Yeah. Take off the ring. Right. Was that and he had some, was that Gandalf? Well, I, I mean, I mean, Gandalf says that he had some part to play, you know. Uh, it, Jeez, dude. Yeah. So it was almost re- so even from afar, uh, his influence is, is pretty awesome. Crazy, crazy. That's why I love and, it. And we have this <laughs> recurring theme of seeing Gandalf from afar and not knowing until later that that's him. So I love this idea. Well, and I so I'm not idea. saying that it's not just Gwah here doing his thing. Right. No, it no, very no, much yeah, seems yeah, like sure. that sort of. What's sure. going on? But sure. I, I just thought the idea, the great circling pattern and that moments before, you know, the work was being done. And I get that, that most like it's just those two are so connected yeah. um, that I, I thought, wow, it's just watch. Well, someone's going to come in and go, oh, guys, you know what? On like page 48 of the, it uh, actually says it says it's exactly well, this. Well, well, we haven't okay. got there yet. Yeah. Okay. So it's been a, been a couple while. of hobbits daydreaming. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I love about his works. Again, you can 
You can't go find the answer. Or, you know what? This is a mythology, by the way. So if you want well, to kind of just sit and read and go, hey, I wonder. That's what. That's the great thing about myth is, you know, same thing with Tom Bombadil. How long do we sit around that fire talking about Tom Bombadil at the long expected party? Oh, gosh. What is he? Who is he? Oh, and no gosh. one was going, that's wrong. That's wrong. No. no, that's not right. It's like, maybe. I don't know. Sure. Could be. Right, yeah. You know what happens in the Shire around the tables of the Green Dragon? Walking trees. That's, right. Exactly. Right. that's nothing. That's hogwash. You <laughs> yeah. know? Right. It's crazy. I know. It's cool. It's fun. It's fun. Okay, so um, we know now that he's rushing towards Boromir. Yep. Here's the great horn. And, and, and his horn. So let's mm. let's move on, uh, you know, past that a bit um, and talk about, because basically we have a little break and then he immediately is there yeah with Bormir and and again just just too late right he had heard he had heard harsh voices of orcs that you know he could distinguish in the distance he feels horrified like you said runs down to him maybe a, maybe about a mile it says in a little glade not far from the lake he found Boromir he was sitting uh with his back to a great tree as if he was resting but Aragorn saw that he was pierced with many black feathered arrows his sword was still in his hand but it was broken near the hilt his horn cloven in two was at his side. Many orcs lay slain, piled all about him and at his feet. Can and, I tell you something? Yeah, can you imagine finding your friend like that? Yeah, and, and I love the word choice because he was resting. He's, yeah. he's, done, he's done a great work. It's true. And he sat down to rest. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> so, I mean, his... Gosh, dude. Okay, and this part... See, you know, it's funny because we're talking about how short this chapter is and how we could just yeah. fly through it. This part in the movie... To this day, man, it's hard for me to get through this part without shedding tears. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's just to, yeah, and just to think about it, it took, it took this moment for these two to finally see eye to eye, yeah. to finally call one another brother. Yep. To to realize that they're not so different. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It is. It's crazy. It it, it really yeah. is. And and with his last words too, he's. He's also um, saving the fellowship. Yes, he is. You know. Yes, he is. And that's 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 what I think is is unbelievable. Those last words of guidance are really what yeah, uh, usher on. And, right. And, if and, they would have found him, yeah, and he was minutes later. Yes. And he wasn't able to relay that. They'd be even more lost. I think You're he, right. I think he sat down to rest and he held on. And he I agree. Knew, and he I knew agree. that uh, you know. I mean, I know that he's taking arrows and things, but you know, especially once he saw. Um, the halflings uh, bound. I think you're absolutely and, right. And, I've and never thought of it that way, but you're totally just right. The will. I mean, imagine to hold on. I don't know. I just, yeah. He's resting. <laughs> yeah. To keep his remaining strength. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. Uh, I mean, I just kind of want to read through a lot of this. Go Is ahead, that cool? Go ahead. So Aragorn knelt beside him. Boromir opened his eyes and strove to speak. At last, slow words came out. I tried to take the ring from Frodo. And the first thing that he says is his confession. Yeah. Right. He can't die without telling uh, members of the fellowship that this happened. Yep. I am sorry, I have paid. His glance strayed to the fallen enemies. Twenty at least lay there. They have gone, the halflings. The orcs have taken them. I think they are not dead. Orcs bound them. He paused and his eyes closed wearily. You know, again, just like right on death's doorstep. After a moment, he spoke again. Farewell, Aragorn. Go to Minas Tirith and save my people. I have failed. Dude, this is this is the part that always gets me in the movie, right? There's this big confession. There's yeah. this I failed you. Yeah. You know, I think he says in the film, I failed you all. And Aragorn says, you know, no. Taking his hand and kissing his brow. Gosh, geez, dude. You have conquered. Few have gained such a victory. Be at peace. Minas Tirith, sh Minas Tirith shall not fail. Or shall not fall. Mm -hmm. Boromir smiled. Man, dude, it's just amazing. Uh, which way did they go? Was Frodo there, said Aragorn. But Boromir did not speak. Alas, said Aragorn, thus passes the heir of Denethor, lord of the Tower of Guard. This is a bitter end. Now the company is all in ruin. It is I that have failed. Vain was Gandalf's trust in me. Qu questioning himself here, man, mm -hmm. to yep. the core. Right. What shall I do now? Boromir has laid it on me to go to Minas Tirith, and my heart desires it. But where are the ring and the bearer? How shall I find them and save the quest from disaster? Yeah. Uh, it's it's unreal. It's it, crazy. It's just so unreal. It's it's awesome to see Aragorn kind of say, you have conquered. Yeah. Uh, few have gained such a victory. And it's true. It's true. He, he almost took the ring, but didn't. Yeah. 
to be, mm-hmm. and, and I think maybe the conquering is to be as tempted as Boromir was with such good intentions. Yeah. And to still come out having not, he didn't kill Frodo. No. Uh-uh. You know, he, well, he didn't end up taking the ring. Right. Well, the other, the, the other part is that he actually still comes to the ring's defense. Absolutely. You know, he started the, the ring bearer's defense, I should say. Absolutely. And, and you follow the story all the way through, what he did yeah. helped spur on what had to happen anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the whole Judas thing. Like, sure. you know, sure. it, it had, someone had to drive Frodo away. He was yeah. having trouble doing it himself. And that was Boromir's role mm-hmm. was to get Frodo off on his own and thereby, you know, influencing Sam to go with him and they're off on their own in secrecy doing their but thing. I, I think a, a lot of reasons why people are drawn to Boromir is that mm-hmm. we all have shortcomings and failures. Oh, he's the most and, relatable character, isn't he? Well, yes. and, and he's able to say, I have failed. Yeah. How hard is that to say? It, it I, is hard. I have failed. Yes, it is. And, I, and I'm sorry. You know, and it's the then, first thing he said. I tried to take the ring from Frodo. Yeah. Confession. I failed. I'm sorry, but I have paid. Yeah, I have paid. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't just mean physically. No, 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 no. I, I think yeah. I think it's it, it multiple. It's a, it's a in a lot of different ways he's paid. Mm-hmm. I think he's he's think paid about that in moment that, like, right the, after. like the suffering that that happened, yep. and also in sort of like how he feels like he betrayed the fellowship. A little, like he feels that whether you know you want to talk about that or not, he also then has paid in that he was he allowed. The halflings to get away, you know, yeah. uh, Sam and Frodo, in a sense, yeah. like he's drawing the enemy to him, yeah. you know, and he knows, I mean, whether, I don't know, it doesn't go into detail here, but I can, I can only imagine that he knows that Frodo, I can imagine that, he, that he's sitting back at that fire with them near, near um, uh, the river and is thinking Frodo's gone. Yeah. You know, he's going to go do his own thing now. And I've, I've, that's probably a good thing. He's still wrestling with that, but then yeah. I just have, a, I, I don't know. He saves I think uh, the fellowship in some ways. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, you know. All right. Wow. Then you got uh, Aragorn knelt. Says he knelt for a while, bent with weeping, still clasping Boromir's hand, and that's how Legolas and, and Gimli find him. They come in and they're, you know, uh, they it says they they came into the glade and halted in amazement, you know, mm-hmm. to, to see that, yeah. you know, it's like their worst. Fe- they probably didn't even really fear this. I guess they they probably, they had no idea what they were going to walk into, and then to see you know one of their companions dead and. Their leader, weeping. Yeah, that'd be uh, be rough, man. I got a question. Be rough. Blowing the horn. Yeah, I believe was to draw those orcs towards him. Sure. I mean, it was also to say, "Here is where I am." Mm-hmm. You know, calling for get help me. in a way. And, and, and I get the help piece too, and that's what brought them mm-hmm. towards him. But uh, I don't know. Don't, don't you feel? I mean, I, th- I think it's also his because uh, I love the way they do it in the movie. So I think post Malone to you is Boromir's horn to him. Remember okay. how he would do that earlier, yeah. you know, back in book uh, book two, I guess after the fellowship was formed. Yeah, yeah. And he would blow that horn, and at times it was like, dude, come on, like, settle down. It was a, right. it was a pump up for him. It was a yeah. reminder of home. It was a, a battle cry as much as it was, hey, here I am. Sure. You know what I mean? It, it is that too. But I'm sure also when he blows on that horn, man, Dinah. Dino, why don't you blow it, baby? Uh-huh. Boromir, yeah. come on. <laughs> I think it just it does something to him. It, it, it probably amps him up, and it brings yeah. out his you know his inner steward, and he's just, yeah. oh, let's go. Right, yep. Yeah. But, yeah, he's fired up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gosh. Cool. But yeah, you're right. It, it is drawing, it's drawing those orcs, orcs to him. They're like, you know, looking for every... And then there they are, and they, there he is hearing that, and then coming, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah right on, right. Uh, so... Le- uh, Legolas and Gimli, though, believe that Aragorn is actually kind of wounded because of way, the way in which he's crouched in front of uh, Boromir. And he says, alas, I'm unscathed, uh, for I was not here with him when he um, was defending the hobbits. You know, or he, he fell defending the hobbits while I was away upon the hill. Mm-hmm. And that's when they turn their attention to the halflings and the hobbits yeah, as, as to where they went. And it's, it's those words mm-hmm. um, that uh, he's able to pass on and say that, you know, he, he said that they're still alive. Yeah. He believed that they were still, you know, that the, that the orcs had bound them, you know. Yeah. So. Um. Well, yeah, because he and, and he knows. So they're still confused as to where Sam and Frodo are, but they know that this direction near where Bor, uh, where Boromir is, uh, fell, Merry and Pippin were nearby. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, he had sent them in that direction, mm-hmm. or he had sent Boromir after them. Mm-hmm. That's so. right. That's right. But uh, yeah, but uh, Legolas says first we Ugh. must tend to the fallen, so they they. 
they get up there, they're trying to decide what to do. But yeah. first, it's important that we, you know, tend to, you know, our companion. Mm-hmm. So that's right. We, and then they even have this con- uh, conversation about how do we, you know, how, how do we honor him? Do we bury him? No, we don't have time or energy for that. It, it would take too long. Do we, right. you know, uh, erect some kind of cairn or something like that? No, we, they decide to, um, you know, to give him back to the river. Mm-hmm. Um, and the falls of Raris, you know, would, would take him eventually to Gondor. Yeah. So this romantic idea that he, you know, would, would sail home in a way. Yep. Uh, very like, it's very um, like uh, uh, Norse sort of uh, Viking yeah, Celtic idea, right? Yep. Of, of one of those, um, you know, those uh, burial ships that they put kings out on and set on fire and stuff, kind of a deal. But, and they, you know, they gather together um, his effects and then all of the, um, am I getting ahead of myself here? No, you're right. You're right in the right spot. They're, they're. Uh, putting together all the the helms and the shields and the swords of his of the enemies he defeated to to gather together and carry carry with him and put mm-hmm. in that boat with him. Yep. And while they're searching, they find these uh, two uh, blades of Westerness. Yep. Um, you know, from from the uh, island of Numenor, the, mm-hmm. these blades that were forged that um, Merry and Pippin had. Yeah. You know, described as uh, leaf bladed, damasked in gold and red. And searching further, they found the sheaths, black, set with small red gems. And uh, who is it that says, Aragorn says, no orc tools these. Yeah. So, you know, they, they, they realize that these are the, the blades and that the orcs wouldn't pick them up mm-hmm. yeah. uh, because they, they recognize them, you know, uh, wound about with spells for the bane of Mordor. Yeah. Crazy. Yep. So they, would, they, left, they left them there, but, um, you know, uh, giving, them, giving them hope that they can get them back. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. why they took them, right? Yeah, they wanted right. to return them. That's right. Uh, to Mary and Pippin, so yeah. which is really awesome. Uh, Legolas kind of goes around looking for some more arrows. That's right. You know, he sees out. My quiver's um, empty. Which is that's cool. That's what she said. Because it's never empty in the movies. <laughs> All right, so. No, it's not. <laughs> it's never empty, okay? I think there's, in The Hobbit, doesn't, don't they make a joke about that? There's, he reaches back for it and there's nothing there. Right, yeah, 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 yeah that's a big point, yeah. Yeah, so. goofy fight scene. Um. Okay, so. Um, yeah, wow. So those, yeah, they're searching around again, just sort of looking for uh, different things. Mm. Uh, Aragorn uh, looked on the slain, uh, and he said, They here, noticed something here. That's right. Yeah, here lie many that are not folk of Mordor. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, some are from the north, from the Misty Mountains. And so this is some interesting uh, background on orcs. Yeah. You know, which uh, just the different regions in which they can come. Yeah. I, don't, I didn't necessarily know that the Misty Mountain orcs were more of an independent mm. you know, group I didn't either. Of, of, of orc. Didn't either. So that was kind of cool. It is in, cool. In, in our research, we kind of figured that out today. Um, they get this startling realization too, don't they? So, so they, they see that some of them are from the Misty Mountains. Um, uh, and they also see these four goblin soldiers of great stature, swart, slant-eyed, with thick legs and large hands. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a little different. They, they notice these. Uh, this this would have been like, you know, obviously Lurts in the movie. <laughs> yeah, right. So mm-hmm. uh, they were, but, you know, Aragorn doesn't, doesn't fight them in the book. Uh, they were armed with short, broad-bladed swords, not with the curved scimitars usual with orcs. And they had bows of yew in length and shape like the bows of men. Upon their shields, they bore a strange device, a small white hand in the center of a black field. Yeah. On the front of their iron helmets was set an S rune wrought of some white metal. So you got Aragorn saying, I've never seen this before. Mm-hmm. What right. does it mean? And Gimli says, well, S is for Sauron. Obviously. Matter of fact, yeah, yeah, <laughs> obviously. Well, come on, Aragorn, Why what are not? you thinking? Right, and Legolas says no. Sauron, I did, this is very interesting because I didn't, I hadn't really known this. Sauron does not use the elf runes. Yeah. And then Aragorn goes a step further. Neither does he use his, neither does he use his right name, nor permit it to be spelt or spoken. Mm-hmm. It's like literally, okay, J.K. He who must not be named. I know she stole it. Yeah, a little bit there, huh? Borrowed it. That's cool. Smart. Um, and he does not use the white hand. The orcs in his service of Barad-dûr use the sign of the red eye. Yeah. All right. So, obviously, he, they're coming to this. It's just cool how they work their way through this conclusion. S is for Saruman, I guess, he said at length. There is evil afoot in Isengard, and the West is no longer safe. Well, you know, uh, so at this point... Gandalf feared. I think, I think you and I had, yeah, as Gandalf feared. Yeah. Uh, leading up to this point, and coming through Lothlorien, they don't know necessarily what... They have no idea what's going on there, yeah. you know? And so you're getting just a tidbit, 
teased down here. I think we see a lot in the more in, in, in the film, mm-hmm. you know, and um, we see that creation happening. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of neat that we don't really see it that. It is cool. And the first way that you're introduced to it is, is these little clues, yep. these hints that you kind of have to put stuff, you know. Searching through the dead. Yeah. yeah gotta, right. Put the pieces together. And, and, that, so, and that the battle with the, the battle of Boromir with these broke his sword. Mm-hmm. Like that's another thing to think about too. I'm I'm sure his sword was of of good make and and mighty yeah. and strong and battling with these guys broke it. Right. That's yep. crazy. So Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um man, wow, quite an enemy they have to face that they're coming to the realization uh this isn't going to be an easy fight. I mean, they knew it before, but uh what these what these um you know, this this new breed of orc or goblin is they're they're not really sure well i would i'd have to look at the map real quick but um so they when they came out of the you know down from the like the misty mountains and out yeah. of moria they believed that they were pursued that same group that went into lothlorien uh was mm-hmm. pursuing them a lot of them were killed mm-hmm. and and dissuade they were um once they and the nature of orcs is sort of cowardly right once they've lost their leader they, they might sort yeah, of disband they, a little yep, bit that's right and, uh, that's right uh and it, what have you. So these are different and, and they come from a different direction almost. Yeah. I actually think that might've been a, why they're a little caught, ca- caught off guard uh, as to, yeah, sure. You know, um, on that side of the bank, you know, yeah. of, of the river, what was, ha- you know, what was happening, what was coming through there. They're able yeah. to come so swiftly through, I guess the country of Rohan, you know, is that where they're coming through? Mm-hmm. If you think about um, Isengard and, and, and where it's, really, I could be wrong. I totally am just, you know, no. Yeah. I mean, they they come from they come from the west, right? They're it's like in the in the film, um, the the line uh, Legolas has when he's talking to to Aragorn is perfect. You know, he says, um, uh, "It's not the eastern shore that worries me. A mm-hmm. shadow and a threat has been growing in my mind." Yeah, you yeah. Know, something evil draws near. I can feel it. Right. And it and it comes from the west. Right. Because yeah. they came from much. So uh, their path down the Anduin. Uh, when they come out the Dimro Dale there, right? And, mm-hmm. and they, they go, they go through Lorien, mm-hmm. uh, down the end when, if you look there, just sort of, um, from that river to, uh, near Fangorn, mm-hmm. um, that seems the route in which they were coming from where, where these white hand, you know, uh, goblin like chieftains, yeah. uh, were, were, were coming from. Yeah. Cause where they are, you know, you, you go straight West and you're in the East eminent, you're in, you're in Rohan. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, so, and the gap of Rohan is real close to, uh, you know, to Isengard. Yeah. Um, yep. So, yes, yeah, straight west um, is a cool chance to get out your uh, Lord of the Rings project map, guys. Uh, that interactive map that's just mm-hmm. so cool. Zoom in and out of, follow different paths, click on points. Yeah, straight straight west. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's just sort of neat um, when you think about... They had talked about how they didn't want to, uh, you know, come all the way down the western side of that mountain range mm-hmm. in you know it would bring them too near Isengard mm-hmm. right to come through that gap of Rohan and you can see now why they must have traversed across Rohan pretty easily mm-hmm. and so that's what's scary yeah, i think is. right and so, is, is that is. they're moving freely across that land and they shouldn't be able to right so that's a little unexpected yes so. yeah and and it's a pretty um it's a pretty uh you know desolate land there's not forest for them to hide in it's it's plains it's fields, you know uh-huh. what I mean. Yeah. So that's the other thing too. Um, you know how how orcs don't don't really like daylight. That's right. Yep. So these travel in a different way, where they wouldn't be able to have cover during the daytime. Uh, they're not not necessarily f- afraid of that, unless they have cover from from a wizard who could tr- control the weather, uh-huh. you know, or something. Provide them. Yeah. yeah. So some cover. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Uh-huh. Okay. More questions we have as a fellowship. Well, but who's but Gim- our enemy? Well, yeah. And, and Gimli says we don't have time to ponder on these riddles. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, that's so great. so they bear uh, Boromir away, uh, and uh, move on. Yeah. Um, so taking his axe out, he he cut down several branches. Um, they lash those together uh, with bowstrings, and they spread their cloaks upon the frame. And so they basically uh, they they carry him back and his body near uh, back to the shore. And they've decided, as, as you said, they're going to put him in one of the boats and they're going to send him, you know, um, down to what is happening. As do you think that uh, you know, we could lash together a podcast one of these days? <laughs> lash together. Absolutely. I think we could. I mean, you'd have to get the name right on the head. We would. Um, sorry. I know it's getting kind of heavy there. We're about to yeah. say goodbye to one of our companions, but let's just take a second to daydream. I think Boromir would respect that. 
I think he'd want us to start a podcast. I think he would. So, uh, I don't know. You got any ideas for a name off the top of your head? Uh, Let's think here. Let's go with uh, maybe Guided by Perplexity Podcast. (laughs) I like that, my friend. Um, How about Up Trash Talking Tolkien with Xavier Milhouse? I think we could do that one. I think we absolutely for you, Zay, everybody. should do that one. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Come when you hear the horn podcast. Ooh, little innuendo. I like yeah. that. Uh, the All's a Miss podcast in honor of Aragorn. Perhaps that sounds good. Maybe the Air U Aluva Pod. Oh, too Kurt. far. Too far. Hurt you, little <laughs> son of a gun. Um, uh, second bre- breakfast podcast. Sure. If I could get that one out. I'd love a bit. Um, yeah, we're close. <laughs> um, maybe one of these days we'll we'll yeah. get to that. We'll try. Yeah, we'll try. Yeah. Uh, okay, as so, you were saying. Yeah, as I was getting into a real serious part there. <laughs> thanks for uh, for bringing us uh, out of that. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, we're we're yeah, we're, we're basically just making preparing the making the ready the body of Boromir. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, what are they looking for here? They said. Uh, um, they actually they actually take him out they they paddle uh, him out a ways don't they mm-hmm. okay yes, they do. Uh, so they're, they're moving him they also talk about moving his body you know they again talk about his stature uh, yeah. they said uh, they they found it no easy task Bormir was a man both tall and strong mm-hmm. uh, just just crazy to think that even even when he's you know passed on that's that's a constant that's a reminder moving him like geez he was a a mighty man he really was. Yeah, and so yeah. as they went back, I think it was Legolas and Gimli go back to kind of uh, get the boat there. They said there's a strange tale to tell. Yeah, this is great. Right, that there are only two boats upon the bank. They thought there would be more. Uh, we could find no trace of the others. There's no trace of the orcs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, and, and that's that's something that's striking, right? So it is. Uh, we have no sign of them. The orcs have taken or destroyed all the boats. Or he said, and the orcs would have taken or destroyed all the boats but, sure. and the baggage as well. Mm-hmm. And that... There are still bags there. Mm-hmm. There are still boats there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it could not have been the orcs. Yeah. And we're missing two other members of our fellowship. This chapter should be called, um, you know, the emergence of Sherlock's or something. <laughs> it's just a, putting together the clues. <laughs> the elementary you know? fellowship. Where's idea. Watson when you need him? Yeah, you know? exactly. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. They're, they're left all these clues. They have to fill in the gaps. And it's amazing how they're, you you were saying this earlier. It's, it's amazing how they've, they've been given enough to not know right away, but enough to be able to discern what, what's happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. They get yep. these little pieces. And I think honestly, dude, that keeps them from a very dark place. Yeah. I think that keeps them alive. I think that, that keeps them hope and or gives them hope and keeps them together. Yeah. And with a sense of, you know, at the end in a page and a half here, when they, you know, decide to make for a, a hunt that will be marveled at. Yeah, you know, Ex- oh, it's because oh. of these little tidbits that are given yes. to him, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. so right. So uh, Aragorn will go. He'll look at that later. He'll, he'll look at that uh, uh, the tracks there. Yeah. But now they laid Boromir in the middle of the boat um, that go was to bear it. him away. Yeah. yeah, the gray hood and the elven cloak they folded and placed beneath his head. Uh, they combed his long dark hair and arrayed it upon his shoulders. The golden belt of Lorien gleamed about his waist. His helm they set beside him. And across his lap, they laid the cloven horn and the hilts and the shards of his sword. Mm. Beneath his feet, they put the swords of his enemies. That is such a just, ugh. You can envision it, can't you? I, I mean, it's, it's like, and it's, I love the place. It's cool that, that they too. do that, though. Yeah, that he's standing upon the weapons of his enemies. He's conquered them. He's on top. You know what I mean? They put them at his feet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so they rode sadly along the shore. Uh, turning into the uh, swift running channel. Uh, this is where they head up past uh, uh, the uh, Parth Gallon, right? Yep. Uh, they're near Toll Brandir, uh, which was that, mid- that middle island, I right? I think it's, yes. And I think it's beautiful here, too. There's the steep sides of Toll Brandir were, were glowing. It was now mid afternoon. As they went south, the fume of Auraris rose and shimmered before them a haze of gold. Yeah. The rush and thunder of the falls shook the windless air. So just this. You don't really. I mean, a li- you get a little bit of the uh, majesty of the moment in the film, but it's so, just so brief, and 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 he's just gone. But like this, this this glow of gold everywhere. This mm-hmm. afternoon light hitting everything. You know, late winter afternoon light lighting everything up. 
and it's you know his golden belt, all all these um, kind of uh, the way the way Middle Earth is almost kind of honoring him as he's as he's you know taking his final ride. It's just it's, yeah, it's it's amazing to like the imagery he creates here. Uh, if you stop and let those lines linger, if you read through them, it's it's no problem. But if you stop and let those lines kind of linger, you're like, wow, this is this is. Uh, I don't know the way the way he's he's being seen off is one of the most honorable you could imagine well, for him. It, they have to depart, and, yeah. and and to be honest with you, one of the hardest parts uh, to do is to actually leave the body. You know, it's the last thing you have, right? It's, it's the last it thing you're holding on to, and it's very hard to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they had to sorrowfully they have to let loose the funeral boat. And, Dude, and, uh, and look at the, the words that like their 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 Boromir lay restful. Peaceful, gliding upon the bosom of the flowing water, like just the mm-hmm. way he wrote this. Come on, yep. Jaron. Yep. The stream, <laughs> the stream <laughs> took him. Uh, while they held their own boat back with the paddles, he floated by them, and slowly his boat departed, waning to a dark spot against the golden light, and then suddenly it vanished. Rarus roared on, unchanging. The river had taken Boromir, son of Denethor, and he was not seen again in Minas Tirith. Standing as he used to stand upon the white tower in the morning, but in Gondor in after days, it was long. It long was said that the elven boat rode the falls and the foaming pool and bore him down through Osgiliath and past the many mouths of Anduin and out into the great sea at night under the stars. Uh, I wanted to read all that because you know who would love that is Mike Charles. You know, I'm, I'm sure mm-hmm. he's weeping at this point if he's listening right oh, now. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And. I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's, it's amazing to think. And, and, and it's funny how that, that one thought is there. You know, you always, when someone passes, when you lose someone, um, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how you think of that, that thing that they were known for that they'll never do again. Yeah. Yep. Right. You know, at least in, in this waking life, you know, he'll never stand upon the white tower in the morning. You know, he'll never be seen there again doing that. Mm. And uh, it's just a weird reality that that part that 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 part of his life has come to an end and that will be no more you know it's just and all the people who probably looked up and saw him and thought ah there's boromir you know the hope of gondor right you know what i mean a oh, leader, yeah. a leader Absolutely. of men and and to think that that's not they're waiting anymore. for him to return right now um you know they're yeah. longing for him to and return these, and these three are the witness to the fact that he never will yeah like that is, that's powerful man. i know i know and, and it's it's neat because later on there's some there's some good, uh, some good stuff, uh, yeah. that that goes down uh, yeah. when we get to Minas Tirith and yeah. different places. So, mm-hmm. okay, um, but yeah. So all right, as as the as it's heading down the Anduin uh, out, in, and so they're hoping. And this is that was. Did you read the part where it says like they're hoping that it goes out the many miles of the Anduin and out mm-hmm. into the great sea at night yep. under yep. the stars? Fantastic. So yeah, it's beautiful. Um, now we have sort of this uh, Boromir's lament, right? Mm-hmm. And and it's a neat. Um, just an awesome, awesome song here. We're, we're, we're right at the end. And we yeah. actually had someone send us um, a song. That's right. And so I thought it would be kind of neat for us to uh, play that. Absolutely. To you've, play got, that. Uh, uh, you've got the, th- it's also interesting too, just again, the silence, right? I love how Tolkien always, he doesn't ever just let us imagine they're silent. He tells us, you know, for a while, um, for a while, the three companions remain silent, gazing after him. Right, just yeah. I, I just imagine them just staring, you know, at Toll Brandir and, and the edge of the falls, just fixated on that point. Aragorn says they will look for him from the White Tower, but he will not return from mountain or sea. And then slowly he begins to sing. Sing. So yeah. I'll go ahead and uh, play yeah. part of Bormir's lament. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is from uh, Rael. So we want to say uh, thank you. Oh yeah, this uh, is to 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 Rael because this is actually really neat. So. Yeah.
Got one for one word for that beautiful majesty we just heard. Yeah. Damn. Rael, thank you very much. Rael, that was uh that was awesome. Beautiful. Very wonderful. Beautiful. So you hear uh, you hear this uh lament from the from the three winds, right? Yeah. Um well, and go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Well, I, I just think it's 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 everything we were we were talking about. The idea that he's um not going where maybe we thought he was going to go and, and yeah. the way in which he's returning is very different. Yeah. Um, but it's beautiful. And for them to come up with this and for Legolas and, and Aragorn to kind of go back and forth and to sing this is, is, is uh, just, it's awesome. And we can talk more about it in a second, but just the, the next, the fact that the next, um, you know, we notice it's, it's Aragorn, then Legolas and Aragorn, right? Yeah. Yep. And then it's Gimli who says, you left the East wind to me, but I will say not of it. Like almost like to me, I take that as 
Gimli's he's too heartbroken to even sing. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. You, know, you 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 spoke of uh, you know these the, the um, what north south west mm-hmm. and south. Yep. Uh, bringing tidings of of where what happened to Boromir, where he is now. But um, you know, I, I'm not strong enough yet to to do that. And amazing too how they they played on the, how the the laments play on that that very last thought. Yeah. You know that Aragorn says he leads them right into it. You know that they'll look for him. Yes. And he won't yeah. return. Yeah. You know, and this is what, this is what, um, <laughs> kind of too, like, <laughs> I mean, there's so much there that I haven't totally unpacked, but almost like there's, there's the three wins that we sang about and there's the three, the three yes. companions left. Yeah. You've got Aragorn and Legolas and Kimli who could tell their tale of, of Boromir and, uh, yeah. Wow. Royale, that was, that was beautiful. That was just. I think that there's there's more to that east wind being left unspoken. Okay. You know, um, I, I I don't exactly know what, and and I'd love to hear um, some it's of our. It's a British thing, isn't it? The east wind. Well, yeah. The east it, wind takes us all. Isn't that a saying? I think so. I don't. Yeah, it's. I don't know. It also from, you know, the east, just sort of this uh, possible newness, mm. something coming. I know sometimes. The morning. Sometimes we the morning. think. Yeah. Uh, look to the east, you know, and I know that sometimes we're traveling east to destroy something, and we often think of the west as being, uh, you know, very much a, a place that we want to go. But um, the wind that's blowing, you know, from the east, I don't know. It just there's something to it, you know, that mm-hmm. that Gimli's going to leave it sort of uh, unsaid. He doesn't have the heart to say, um, or, or or to put it into words. So really interesting. And Rael, that's a that's a complex actually, like. Uh, song to to put a tune to yes, it, you it know is. and so I thought that was really really good uh, definitely oh my gosh that, okay so. well here you go um, which fine just doing some real quick research on the fly here yeah um, I, I knew that there was a I'm, I'm picking the reference from Sherlock I think he talks about so if you if you're familiar with the TV series the PBS series BBC uh, it was on PBS masterpiece with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman of course. Um, the East Wind is this uh, story that um, Mycroft tells Sherlock to kind of scare him. Um, ah. and, and the East Wind is symbolic. It's a euphemism signifying destruction or destructive force yeah. emanating or being generated at the command of a deity. So maybe there's some allusion there as well. Wow. Um, yeah. I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know. That's cool. My initial reaction is just like, you know, it's his turn. It's Gimli's turn to sing, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he's like, man, I can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> but that's my simple little butterbur mind. I just look at it like that. And I I, guys, I truly am a hobbit. You know, I, I am. And hopefully that makes me endearing and lovable, but it might frustrate some of you. And, and that's okay too. Uh, but that's just, that's how I, in that moment, I'm like, yeah. Cause that would be me. I wouldn't know what to say. You know, this guy who, and, and I think Gimli and Boromir are kind of similar too, right? They're, uh, you know, Boromir's people have, uh, have uh, had to deal with a lot of loss and destruction and not a lot of credit. And Gimli's race uh, as a whole has suffered the same kind of frustrations and, uh, and, uh, and not abuse, but, you know, fate, I guess, in a way. And so they could kind of see eye to eye on that, right? I mean, um, you know, so many of the dwarves' homes have been taken, right, throughout the... Throughout, uh, uh, the ages in middle earth and, and Bormir, that's the, that's the very uh, threat that drives him to do what he does, you know, the, the, to save his home. Correct. Um, yeah. Yep. I don't know. It's just kind of sort of interesting there, but um, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I have a couple of comments that actually, so um, we've recently started our discord um, chat rooms and, and various things. So I wanted to read a couple of things in sure. here. Um, and I don't know, some people put their nicknames in here. I don't know. All of, I don't know all the nicknames, so Beast I don't know mode is exactly Z7. who all these uh, people are. You're but the flannel I, I wizard, one, aren't you? I'm the flannel wizard in there. So definitely check that out. Um, but we've got Chris and I believe this might actually be uh, Nick, but I could be wrong. I, I, I got to double check. But anyways, it says, um, I guess I'll kick things off here. Just two thoughts I want to throw out there. First, it's humbling that Aragorn and Legolas are able to come up with this lament for Boromir. Uh, so quickly and on the spot, yeah. you know, um, to me, this says a lot about how important music is in middle earth. Mm-hmm. They're clearly practiced. Second, how different would the rest of the story be if Aragorn and crew had decided to go after Frodo instead of Merry and Pippin? 
right? Um, yeah, Chris goes on to say here, I really enjoyed uh, Tolkien's expansion on that uh, lament. It really got me choked up uh, in the depths of their uh, grief for losing a brother. He must yeah. have written it uh, in there for the grief that he felt during the war. Great connection there. So, yeah, you know, Chris, I, that's, a I good, often, that's a good thought. I'm so glad that there are those of you that, that, that keep reminding us of that because sometimes I get so stuck into the story and then the yep. histories of Middle Earth, they forget his own, Tolkien's own personal history. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, the horrors he saw in war. I mean, I think pretty much all of his friends died in World War One. Mm-hmm. Like they went in together and he was the only one that came out. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this is something that and, and the laments, I'm sure that he wrote for them. Yeah, I'm sure Tolkien was was sitting there dealing with his grief, either learning of their deaths or back home um, after he'd known about it and, and trying to honor them in some way. And language was his his gift. And, um, I'm sure this is, is, uh, you know, that, that's, that's a bit of Tolkien right there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ooh. Okay. So you got Aragorn. He says, you know, uh, in Minas Tirith, they endure the East wind. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a little telling so, because in that direction lies Bottom Mordor and, and the evil and, and the East and the potential doom of all. Yeah. The, the end of yeah the world, possibly. which, which makes sense if he's from As that, know uh, you know, uh, area, they don't endure it. Yeah. So we're not going to sing about it. Yep. You know, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, that's better. Okay. Shamany, shamany. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, so yeah. What, what else do we have here? I mean, I'm, I can't really go on, man. You just want to stay right here? No, I just. <laughs> With the limit? I think I'm done. <laughs> really? I'm done. You're I'm sad. You're, I'm heartbroken. You're, you're heart. Okay. I feel like them. I know. I know. No. Uh, we can go on. <laughs> okay. But it's very sad. It's like, it's hard to, I don't know. Uh, man, that haunting, haunting music. Uh, definitely nailed the feel of, of the sadness of of losing Boromir for sure, and just the grief and his companions that are left over. Right. So moving on from that, they they kind of go back to searching the ground again. They they're looking for those footprints, and uh, they can't tell whether any of the hobbits have come back since the search for Frodo began. Yeah. Uh, so they, so they kind of turn back to the bank there, um, and uh, out into the river. There are some clear prints here, he yeah. said. A hobbit waded out into the water and back, but I cannot say how long ago. And here's where they start putting some more of the clues together, right? They talk about the two packs that are missing, and one is certainly Sam's. That's right. It was rather large and heavy, of mm-hmm. course, because he always took on more than he should. That's right. Uh, as, as Samwise the Brave always, always has. Yeah. This then is the answer. Frodo has gone by boat, and his servant has gone with him. Frodo must have returned while we were all away. I met Sam going up the hill and told him to follow me, but plainly he did not do so. Yeah. <laughs> he had that moment uh, of clarity, like yeah. you said earlier, yep. that, that uh, I don't know, maybe a word of command was spoken in his heart somehow. For sure. Who was that? Who I, gave him that, 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 you know, clear thought in that moment? Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. it was just him. Yeah. I don't I, I don't, we don't want to take anything away from Sam because that no, is... No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, I mean, that is sort of... Uh, who he is in this story, you know? Yeah. Uh, he, he, it's unexpected when Sam does these different things. He has songs and poems. Sure. He's reading things. Yes, he is. You know, it's just very uh, kind of neat to watch his development. Yeah. Uh, but so Gimli says that it was strange, you know, yeah. that they, that they would leave behind without a word. Uh, and Aragorn says, it's also very brave, it's a brave deed, you know? Yeah. Uh, Sam was right. You know, they go back to that discussion that they had beforehand about uh, knowing Frodo and what he would do and that he wouldn't, um, that he that he knew that he must go himself. Yeah. Uh, but that he couldn't take anybody else with him. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so something happened after he felt, uh, after he left us, that overcame his fear and doubt. So uh, there's something that that pushed him on. And I also love that Aragorn keeps this the words of Boromir to himself for many yes, years. He does. Uh, he does not need to tell the Fellowship right now what right. Boromir said. Um, it, it, the the really, confession well, was made and yeah. Uh, and, and what would that do? Nothing. There would, there would be no good that would that would come of that, you know. And and uh, and especially right. the fact that yeah, you're right. That confession was the first thing Boromir said. Yeah. Um. You know, he saw uh, uh, Boromir's realization that you know I I, I paid. I've done. I did. Yeah. The he wrong saw thing evidence and, of of the payment. Right. You know. Right. And so that, again, that just speaks to how awesome Aragorn is. You know, a lesser a lesser person might either reveal that accidentally, and you know, or. Um, Coincidentally, not coincidentally, uh, unintentionally, I guess, um, or, you know. Right. So, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, so now we're deciding our choice then is either to follow Frodo, uh, or it's to, you know, uh, take after, um, the rest of their companions, you yeah. know, after, after, um, Pippin and Mary yeah. is really what we have to decide. And so as Aragorn's thinking, you know, and now let me think, I make, I make a right choice, uh, and change the evil fate of this unhappy day. So he's, yeah. he's having this day. He mentions it multiple times. It's this reoccurring uh, thought that he has. This day is just, it's unbelievably evil, and, and it just has, nothing has gone right. Yeah. And he feels just so, like he can't make the right decision. And finally, you know, um, it, it does, it, it comes to him. He, he stood silent for a moment, and then he says, uh, I will follow the orcs. I would have guided Frodo to Mordor and gone with him to the end. But if I seek him now in the wilderness, I must abandon the captives to torment and death. My heart speaks clearly at last. And, uh, you know, so the fate of the bear is in the hands, is in my hands no longer. Uh, and I think that's awesome, you know, that he has this uh, realization and, and he listens to his heart. And, uh, you know, yeah, I think he was always coming to this conclusion, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just sort of hard. It's so hard for Aragorn to say. Yeah, that's what's best, you know, is, is, I mean, could he actually, I don't actually think he could have even have foreseen that this is the way no. in which things would needed to but it's interesting, have, have gone. But. It's interesting because you had, you had both Aragorn and Frodo unable to, you know, their minds were maybe made up, but they're unable to take that first step in that action. Mm -hmm. And it's Boromir yeah. that helps both of them, yep. or I guess forces really both yeah, of them sure. to take those steps. Right. Yeah, you're right. So he, I'm sure he did see this coming. I think right? everyone even says here, yeah, in his heart has, has been to go to Minas Tirith. Right. He wants to go. Right. Um, and even now he has to kind of delay that just because the rest of their companions, you know, need looking after. And, yep. and so he's going to, he's going to, you know, help them out. Uh, so I think we can just move on here, my friend. And basically they, they drew up the last boat, uh, carried it to the tree. They laid beneath it, uh, uh, such of their goods as they did not need and mm -hmm. could not carry. Um, and this is where they're getting ready for the hunt. You That's know, right. um, they, they need to travel light. They talk about the speed in which they're going to need uh, to catch up to these uh, orcs, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I love that the mention here that uh, dwarves can, can, can go swiftly as well because they are moving swiftly and they've had a head start. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got to kind of catch up and we'll need that dwarf endurance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I think is, is, you know, uh, that he's got more endurance, uh, endurance, endurance, uh, than yeah. than than the orcs do. Yeah. So uh, excited to see the uh, this Master lines, Gimli. That's right. This line's awesome. You know, we will make such a chase as shall be accounted a marvel among the three kindreds, elves, yeah. dwarves, and men. Forth the three hunters, and then like a deer, he sprang away. You're talking about Aragorn, I think of my buddy uh, James Beard, who um, have you met, James? I don't think I have. You haven't met James yet, but he's uh, our rugby captain. And man, I tell you what, as a little Buttermer, Butterbur, Butter, Buttermere? Yeah. yeah. Butterbur sidetrack here, but uh, right at the end of a chapter, too. But you know what? There are times where, so he's my fly half and I'm scrum half. So that's for people who don't know rugby, he's my first pass. Yeah. He's the one who calls the plays, he's the one who I get the ball to him. And that's, yep. my, that's my biggest worry, at least in America. That's how we play rugby. And then he kind of, you know. Right takes goes takes there. over yeah right yeah. and there are so many times where um i get him that ball and then he he dude he moves just like this like a deer yeah springing and jumping and uh seemingly just running through people and his nickname is actually ghost because <laughs> I, and i, I nice. kid you not I, and I, i've told sarah this before i've you know sat after matches that were just glorious because we've had our heads banged in and we've been through this battle right and I've seen him break away and have, the, and it always ends in a try. He breaks away and he, he goes through and he scores. And there are moments where I'm huffing and puffing and running behind, you know, seeing him just get smaller and smaller in the distance. And I think to myself, someday, you know, someday I will tell tales yeah. about the speed and agility and uh, the mythic, uh, I, I don't know, illusion yeah. of, of James Beard. And, yeah. and people, and I'll say, you wouldn't believe the way he moved. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, right. like I, I can tell you this story and it's true, man. People, people who, who, uh, you know, no rugby will watch him and just be like, holy crap. Yeah. yeah. And he's this slender guy. He doesn't look like he would be, 
you know, uh, hard to take down. He's real, real thin and trim. But right. man, I tell you what, he runs like a deer. Yeah. And so I just think I don't know. I was taking. You know, they've just been through this. It's that you know, legend. Yes. It's his legend, yes. right? That you're talking about. Right. And so you're telling that story. You know that uh, our three hunters, you know, th- their story will be yeah. told. It's told here. Yeah. You know, and uh, the way in which they move. I, I love the the description of the woods, and, and, and you know, and, and the way that they kind of they're tireless and they're swift. Mm-hmm. You know, their minds are made up. That's yeah. the, that's the key there. They're made up and they're 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 locked in. Finally, um, after all this time of of one, uh, you know, wondering and wavering and being unsure. Yeah, you're right. Right. So uh, long slopes they climbed, dark, uh, hard edged against the sky, already red with sunset. Dusk came. They passed away, gray shadows in a stony land. Get out of here! Come on, how can you not be amped for this? First of all, for this I mean, new book. Like exactly, you've got to be fired up because yeah, baby. They passed away, gray shadows in a stony, stony land. land. That's all you need to know. That's, so, that is the two towers. We're done. That's them. You know, <laughs> I, I've said this before, but often when I am on my way to work, and I love that I have a longer drive now, mm-hmm. and I look off into the country, and I think about, you know, I've said it before, you know, Frodo looking into those hills or looking over here to the side, and I think about moving through the land. You know, mm-hmm. you like to hike, and I want to get into hiking more, and just this idea of being out there moving through the land. It's just such a cool image and it thought is. to me that they're out there pursuing. Uh, they've got this goal in mind. And I, I can yeah. almost imagine the uh, the energy that takes over, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, their hearts are made up, yeah. you know. And I think they believe in whatever powers are at work here that are guiding um, Frodo's decisions, their decisions, mm-hmm. you know, uh, what's helping the ring. You know, they had heard from the council that secrecy was going to be you know, one of their uh, greatest, you know, weapons, Yeah. you know? And so, yeah, I don't know. It's just to have your mind set up and to hunt, you know, and to just, you know, I can't wait to hear. Your friends are in trouble and and you have to, um, yeah, I don't know. I can't wait to hear from all you uppers uh, of your reactions to this chapter. Um, Right. It's just, you know, again, it's, it's one that, uh, and and I've always been kind of curious and I I think, uh, I think I know now, um, you know, why it was, why this it's such a sh- it's it's short right seemingly short and seemingly quick and it seems almost like you could have put it put it in in uh, the previous chapter at the end of fellowship of the ring but at the same time uh or, or you know what i've come to realize is no you can't it's it's broken up for a very important reason a yep. to, to 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 show to pay proper tribute to to boromir to give Absolutely. him his own moment Yep, and then also because there's this great shift within our remaining three, right? That we're yep. following. Yep. It's it's no longer this confusion. It's no longer this, um, you know, lack of surety. It's boom. We know where we, what we need to do. We know where we need to go, and we're we're, we're renewed by that. Yeah. So absolutely. So it's, it makes sense to me now. It makes it makes a whole lot of sense. Right. Yeah. Good. It feels like a beginning. It does. <laughs> okay. Wow. All right. Uh, make sure you know that you guys uh, leave your comments. Hit us up either on uh, the Facebook group uh, or in the Discord chat. Yeah, the Discord now. You That's know, right. Uh, you know, and we'll we'll take your your Bywater post. We'll we'll take emails, all that good stuff. So, um, all right. I think it's time to move into Bywater post. Bywater post. There it is. Um, yeah. We've got two. Uh, we've got pretty long, pretty decent size. Uh, yes, we do stories here. So. Um, I will, let's see, I'll let Lane take that, uh, first one, but I, I wanted to mention too, as, as you look that over real quick, mm-hmm. my friend that I wanted to give a rundown here because Susie reminded me at the party, uh, that I gave a rundown and she was at, she was around the fire and she said, I know I'm up now. Ne- I'm coming up next. Cause I heard you. She was like tracking out the episodes. What? what? Susie, I'm sorry to let you know. We have yeah. to put you off until next episode. Sorry. Sorry. We ran out of time. Sorry. Uh, it'll be like that Matt Damon and, uh, Oh crap! What's his name? Uh, Jimmy Kimmel thing, where he always says, "Ran out of time for Matt Damon." Hopefully, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just kidding, Susie. We wouldn't do that to you. So we have uh, this week. We have uh, Jen Shepard and Susie Milhouse. Uh, we also it was kind of strange. It just happened this way, right? Fate would have it that we're, you know, reading both of their stories right after meeting them. Yes, I know. Crazy. That's kind of. It crazy. really did work out that way because I have a list and I and and they really are the next two up. <laughs> it's just uh, a little. I don't know. There's there's greater powers at work here, friends. Right. You know, it's not just the will of Sauron. So do you want to read the rundown first, you said, of who's coming up? Uh, well, yeah, I just have, uh, let's see here real quick. I've got Richard. Um, I've got um, uh, Jessica's story, Katie's story. Um, let's see. Robert, Caleb, um, Yell. So a couple of different 
folks there. Tristan, you got, uh, you got Trotter on there. Trotter coming. Trotter's up? not on there yet, but he will be. <laughs> All right, let's get into Jen's uh, Tolkien story here. Okay. From the Bywater Post. Hi guys, I'd like to apologize early on. This will be a long email. Jen, what have we said about apologizing for length? Right. Jen, I know you're laughing because I know that you laugh at dirty jokes too. So, <laughs> oh my. See now goodness. I know. There were plenty of those going around, and Jen was like the only one. Not the only one laughing, but I think uh, she she caught on pretty quickly when when we were being uh, you know <laughs> throwing the euphemisms out there. So I love uh, it because that's my my sense of humor too. It's your specialty. That's right. I would like to share my Tolkien story, some of which I shared in a review on Facebook, as well as my thoughts on a few things from the episodes. Oh yeah. My first exposure to Tolkien came when I was in second or third grade. My babysitter was watching the animated Hobbit movie while watching me. At the time, I had no idea what she had on. I just remember being creeped out by the frog creature. <laughs> Little did I know that frog creature would become one of my favorite literary characters ever. Yeah, Bilbo does kind of look like a frog in that, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Fast forward a few years, I was in the summer. I was in the summer in between sixth and seventh grade. Fellowship of the Ring had just come out in VHS, and a family friend brought the movie over one day for me to watch. I wasn't really interested, but I had nothing better to do, so I watched it. Best decision of your life. Yeah. Jen. <laughs> Instantly, I was obsessed. My friend, my best friend Laura, also happened to be obsessed, and together, Lord of the Rings took over our lives. Best sentence ever. We were unable to get enough. I read the whole series before the Two Towers came out in theaters. We both started doing research, not only on the movies. We were young and fangirled to an embarrassing level. <laughs> right. You had an Orlando Bloom poster up, didn't you? But also <laughs> the books. We memorized poems and songs, read into the history of Middle Earth, and I did a lot of research on Tolkien himself. That is so cool. Yeah. During our hardcore fangirl stage in middle school, we created our own characters in Middle Earth. Zephyr and Lara Lai, Laura Lay, Lara Lay. Yeah. Whoa. Mm -hmm. um, we would write notes back and forth multiple times a day as our characters. This is so cool. And we even created symbols as our characters' signatures, much like Tolkien had. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Eventual, eventually, Laura took the binder full of notes and used them to write her first book series. Get out of here. Huh. We got to know what this is. Yeah. Although most of although most of it was silly, it is my best memory of that time since uh, interacting with people in school was not the greatest thing in my life. I can relate to that. Um, as we got into high school, uh, the fangirl stage died out, but our love for Tolkien remained. We still reread the books and watched the movies. As we went into college, we kind of parted ways for a while. I did several presentations on Tolkien for school since my projects were always better when the topic was something I was passionate mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Although Lord of the Rings is literary genius, my favorite part about it is why Tolkien created it in the first place and the heart that went into it. It is so much more than just a story. Here, here. We are both out of college and living the adult life, but still make time for Tolkien. Once the extended edition of Battle of the Five Arvings came out, uh, we did a super marathon. Holy cow. We watched all six extended editions uh, back to back with only a two hour nap in between wow. The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Yeah, that equals about 60 years mm -hmm. since we both had worked that day. We also still frequently call each other by our names, even if we don't pass notes anymore. Oh, that's cool. Hmm. Tolkien and his works uh, are full of lessons to me on how life should be, what is really valuable, and who is really important. I have traded my young fangirl tendencies for adult ones. I now collect multiple versions of the books, and I collect the toys as well, both vintage and new. Wow. That's awesome. That's why she didn't really care to win any because she already had them She's all. got them all. You know? Yeah, I know. She yeah. didn't need the riddles winning. Right. Uh, I love listening to your podcast. I don't have a lot of time to read, so um, I don't have a lot of time to read uh, Read it, so let's get back to, into the story. Um, I also love hearing what others have to say and think about what is going on in the books. I could talk about Tolkien and Lord of the Rings for days. I listen to it on my way to and from work, and it instantly puts me in a good mood. And it's also nice to recognize some of the places you talk about uh, since I, too, am from Ohio. That's right, Ashland. Mm -hmm. uh, currently um, b from Ashland, but currently live in Plymouth. Uh, as for my Plymouth, I don't even know where that is. Do you? Uh, Southern Ohio, uh, down by the river. Is that, that's Portsmouth. 
Oh, just kidding. Is Plymouth by that? It probably is. Plymouth. I'll look it up. Look it up for me because I don't we know. We got to figure out what this is. I was is. totally thinking of the wrong spot. <laughs> That's what I thought of at first too, but holy cow. Okay. Um, as for my comments, the first thing is John Reese davies I'm a bit annoyed that he's saying the Amazon show is just a grab for money. Oh, you said it, Jen. So did I. Uh, although that is as true since that is mostly what Hollywood is, I feel that he has no room to talk. He played an Elven King in the MTV adaptation of the Shannara Chronicles, mm-hmm. a book series that the author admits is heavily influenced by Lord of the Rings. Whoa, baby. Punch is thrown. Jen right to the face. <laughs> I love it. Second is the Amazon show. I believe focusing on the time between The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings is good. It's new content for a lot of people, but the creators can bring in characters from both series to make it familiar. I like that perspective. That's a good point of view. You get the boost of both worlds. It can also open things up to other shows involving other characters and other ages of Middle Earth. I think Amazon is also trying to tread carefully where none could go before. Hmm. Tolkien and his son Christopher were very particular about what rights were given. That's right. Until now, the only rights ever given for adaptation was The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. I believe and hope they are trying to honor what Tolkien created as they venture into a whole world of information that was never available before to readers and viewers. As much as I'd like to see the stuff from the first or second age, to the majority of audiences, there will be no connection and they'll lose interest in the show. And that's a really good point, Jen. I think a lot of us kind of underestimate how many people are familiar with first and second age stuff. Me being, I'm, I'm just getting into that and learning that now. So, you know, casual um, Lord of the Rings fans, maybe just of the movies, um, which that doesn't necessarily mean casual, but whatever, that that, that might be too, too different. You're right. Sure. I think that's yep. a great point to be made. V- very valid. Um, by starting with that gap between the series that can bring in characters and stories that uh, can lead into the older stuff, you're right, and hopefully in a way that leaves your average Lord of the Rings fan wanting to know more. Thank you for letting me ramble. Well, Jen, join the club because, yep. Lord, we were born rambling men. We sure were. So that was we awesome. Sure again, uh, Jen, I look forward to seeing you again. Um, hopefully yeah. it's... Hopefully it's not the next long expected party next year, but yeah. you know if it, if that's when it is, I'm looking forward to it. Um, uh, you're an amazing human being, and we're so glad you're in the fellowship. And, and she's so. nowhere near the Ohio River, just so you guys know. Okay, <laughs> she's out in Massachusetts. She's actually up near Rock. Ashland. That's actually oh, it's real close to Ashland. Yeah, okay, it's just north uh, west. And so. can I just say too how cool it is to read their their stories. After yeah. having just met them. I know. It actually it's worked out. It's another level, crazy. guys. It's another level. So right. you just all have to come next year. Yeah, you do. You, you just got to get, get that plane ticket to Columbus. We'll have you know, the flannel wizard drive carriages that, down yep. or up and bring you out. You know, Sure will. Sure we'll, will. We'll flood the, the Dumford. It'll be, it'll be full up. <laughs> all it all sure two will. rooms. <laughs> it sure will. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. All, uh, right. all right. So let's move on here. This is, um, this is, our, uh, this, this is Susie. The team mom. Team mom here. This is... Uh, from her. Hi guys. Here it goes. I tend to ramble, so I'm sure this will be long. I found you all uh, while looking for something to keep my mind occupied while preparing to drive home from vacation with my husband and our little hobbity three-year-old. He eats all the time, <laughs> loves to be outside, and has some big old feet. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Uh, we were on vacation in Lake uh, Land... Uh, yeah, somewhere. Uh, Michigan. Nice. Sounds like a nice place. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and it seems like the, and it seemed like the perfect time or for perfect place to start the adventure uh, with this team of ringers. Uh, this was June 10th, I believe. I am already caught up and currently listening to episode 16 of the podcast. It has been an all-consuming uh, month jumping between listening to the audiobooks and the podcast. Well, I bet. I mean, my gosh, two hour episodes and then trying to also <laughs> listen to the book. <laughs> It's uh, a lot of listening. She's got good ears. She does. Uh, my love of Tolkien started much the same as others uh, we have heard from. I had seen the previews for the Fellowship movie while seeing another movie at the theaters. I remember being very scared and excited by Frodo walking in his quiet and dark house. Yeah. Then Gandalf jumps out of the shadows and says, is it secret? Is it safe? Um, I wanted in on that secret. Yeah. Yeah. Move ahead to the weekend of December 19th, 2001. I was a freshman in high school. My sister was off to an upperclassman dance, and I was a little sad that I didn't have anywhere to go. 
We live in a small town outside of Dayton, Ohio, with not much to do. Anyway, my dad said he heard that the Lord of the Rings movie had just came out, so why not go see it? I went to see this amazing movie with my dad and couldn't believe that I didn't know anything about this land of Middle Earth. Mm. We walked out of the movie, and the first thing my dad said, I thought the ring was destroyed. Did I miss something? <laughs> this led me to a lengthy discussion about how he, um, how he had read the books uh, throughout middle school and high school. Um, he hadn't... Wait a second. I thought the ring was... Okay. Okay, gotcha. Um, we watched the, the, my... Oh, yeah. Okay, got it. Sorry. I'm <laughs> backing up here. Sorry, Susie. Um, Butterbur mode? So, yeah, Butterbur. Exactly. Lane's rubbing off on me. Um, he wasn't a very good reader, and these books helped him get into reading. Okay, cool. We've heard that a lot, mm-hmm. uh, which, is, which is awesome. That's also kind of my story, too. Yep. Uh, and opened up his love of adventure. He said that he used to sneak extra snacks to school in his Lord of the Rings books, too. He had five siblings, so he would sneak a few extra pieces of uh, bologna from the kitchen and put them between the pages of his books to eat on the way to school. <laughs> wow. Um, so, so now, every time I read the books, uh, I think about my dad walking to school, eating his bologna, and reading these stories uh, th- uh, Never, through the bologna ever heard of that. That is Holy actually so... Cow. That's a story. Uh, once I realized that there was so much more to this, um, to this movie, I jumped headfirst into Middle Earth. I read The Hobbit and all... Uh, three of the trilogy. I went to all the movies the day they came out. I collected tons of action figures. Uh, I got all the extended DVD collections and watched all the extra features. Um, you know you're obsessed when you would rather uh, listen to the audio commentary than the actual movie. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah. yeah. Um, I love to hear the background stories and such. I even wrote a 10-page paper in college called The Invasion of the ringers about how the filming of the movies affected the economy and tourism of New Zealand. Yeah. That's dedication. That is dedication. It is. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the main reason I love this book club slash podcast so much is getting all the background and digging deeper into the stories. We get to hear the background and the theories that help build the story. Thank you for sharing your love of Tolkien and middle earth with us. Uh, I'm so happy to have found this podcast uh, when I did so that I'm able to read along with you. I am mm-hmm. just sad that I have to wait a week between episodes now. <laughs> Keep on being amazing, guys. And thanks again, uh, Susie Milhouse. Wow. wow. All I'm going to think about now when I read is bologna. Bologna. Book. <laughs> That's a bunch of bologna. Would you be upset if I started, uh, uh, you know, instead of the bookmark, I started using pieces of bologna to, to mark in your book here? <sighs> that one, not so much. Oh. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to that one. Yeah, right. But okay. the original? No. I might get a little I know frustrated. You, you know I what, know though? Would. I think next year uh, for the uh, potato competition, yeah, I think Susie just needs to bring a Lord of the Rings book with bologna slices in between. Absolutely. Put a little picture of her dad next to it. Absolutely. It'd be kind of cool. It'd be great. We could great. each have a little taste, you know? Yeah. First place goes to Susie with the bologna book. <laughs> that is hilarious. Wow. That's funny. Awesome. Ladies, thank you for sending in your Tolkien stories. Remember, if you want to send yours in, uh, send it to an unexpected pod at gmail.com. That's right. That's right, right? You nailed it. Is that our email? I can't That's remember. It. Okay, yeah, all you right, got right. it. <laughs> An unexpected pod at gmail.com. Uh, send it our way. It'll get buried in there, but guess what? We're keeping track of it. We're very neat hobbits in the Biowater Post, and we'll make sure that we'll go through them systematically, and yeah. yours will be read. And we're, we're doing two. Um, so if they're super long, we do one. We might do two to three. Yeah. Uh, and so we're, we're definitely getting through them, and uh, I, so making headway. Making yeah. a headway. All, All right. right, let's have some strawberries with cream. We had some had some strawberry cake earlier. It was delicious. Goldberry, you never cease to amaze us. Your, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. your beauty is, is unable to be. You tell her. You can't tell her candy because you can't. There's no words. Right? There's okay. no freaking words. That's what I thought. So I could, <laughs> if I, you could use the F word, I would there. Uh, we had the first long expected party this past weekend. And right here in Amanda O, or the Shire of America, no less. If we could host future a future, the you know, a future long expected party, because we're going to do this every year, guys, by mm-hmm. the way. Yeah. Every single year. If nothing else, than just to get Kurt's picture signed, which is amazing. That's right. At any destination, where would you select and why? So if we could do like a remote location somewhere and have this same party blown up, you know what I mean? Because it's going to keep growing every year. Yeah. Uh, where would you pick? Could be anywhere in the whole world. Man, I don't know. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of cop out here and say um, I, I would like it to be in a place where we can get as many uppers to attend as possible. Dang. 
you know? Dang. So where would that be? I don't know. We'll have to look at, we'll have to look at uh, Jim's map and, and kind of see. Uh, if Probably Kansas find... or something. There's it, nothing much out there. There's nothing. Uh, Twista, that, why, Twista. Why are you insulting Kansas? I didn't say it was a bad thing. I okay. live in the middle of nowhere. I all love right. nowhere as. All right. All right. Sure. It is. Small okay, building. so um, so you would pick an area of land where we could fit the most people. No, where the most sounds like Amanda. Be. Oh, logistically make it to there. Yeah, logistically. Make okay, it I get it. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, that's very thoughtful. Yeah, um, that's what I'm, I thought. I'm less thoughtful. I was just thinking how uh, arrogant and cool would it be, guys, if we were like, "Yo, what up, uh, Mata Mata? Yeah, Hobbiton tour farm set. All right, cool. Uh, September twenty second. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're having your own event, but go ahead and book it out. Uh, oh, don't, money's not an issue. Don't worry about it. Uh, the <laughs> uppers are taking over. <laughs> huh? But, Sorry, I don't speak Kiwi. Yeah, the uppers are taking over. Uh, we're coming in from all over the world. So go right. ahead and just get the set looking extra special. Yep. Lay out your finest fare and foul for us and the best barrels of beer. And uh, uh, just just get ready for the best party ever. That'd be fantastic. I would love to have it at the set, I think. That'd be fantastic. You know, <laughs> One well, that's a close second, second to our own backyard, honestly. Close second, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but uh, and it's really cool because they actually they did celebrate because September twenty second is International Hobbit Day. Yeah, absolutely. As well, yeah. and so they had a cool celebration there. And I was looking at the pictures. I'm like, man, you know what? We had Bill Joe. Sure, we did. We had uppers. We sure did. I had a banner. Had a nice yep. fire. Had some potatoes. Um, even had a second breakfast in there at some point. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I. I don't think it needs to be anywhere other than right here. No, but I'm looking forward to already uh, next our party year. next year. Yep, it'll so, be awesome. And so Kurt, that's going to be on the 21st next year, just so you know. Yeah. The way the dates work, buddy. Ask Ask Kelly. Kelly will be able to tell Kelly you exactly. You. So She'll- don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's time for uh, sharing the load. Uh, yeah, and so we had mentioned at the top of Patreon stuff. Yeah, at the top of the show that we wanted to kind of say this to the end. We do, we don't like to uh, put all this out there in in, in the front. No, um, if that makes sense, uh, you know, because it's it's extra and it's honestly just you guys uh, helping us out and and supporting the podcast and we uh, appreciate it. Oh uh, my gosh, it's been tremendous tremendous outpouring of support and we really do appreciate it. And uh, I, I hope you know all of our. I sent a private message to a bunch of our elves. Uh, at that tier and so hopefully they got that and they understand where I'm coming from and that like I want to uh, do right by you guys you oh, know yeah. and I think that's important um, but we had such a uh, I don't know interest in the official shirt mm-hmm. you know the shirt that we had released uh, there for our elves that people were like can we just buy that yeah and we want to say yes because it is it's it's great um, so just to make this a little bit more clear uh, we had a, a meeting too, and Erica, thank you for your help. Erica was here yeah. also, kind of talking to us and giving us uh, some feedback. We got some feedback from some uppers. Uh, and David Fogel gave us some great yes. insights as well. Yeah, it was really he did. good. He did. So, uh, you know, we want to make that shirt available, and we will. We're going to. Yes. Uh, I think uh, Lane at some point is going to reach out and say, hey, we're taking orders for that shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think people will kind of we'll do it through PayPal, we'll get a bunch mm-hmm. of orders. And we might have our friend uh, Rob ship those out to you guys just to sort of help us with shipping costs and things yeah. like that. Uh, so it, they're a decent amount. I just want to be super transparent about uh, they're, they're, they cost a bit of money. They do. So there's, there, I think there's four colors on the front. And so that the more colors you have in a, in a screen print, yeah, the more it costs. And then we also have the graphic on the, on the back, back too. Yeah. So and it's um, a high quality. It's a good, it's a good quality shirt. Too. It is. It is. And it's help cover shipping. You know, we'll, we'll figure that into the cost. So yeah. uh, it is, it is a fair price, but it's, you know, it's gonna be, I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. About 25 bucks. Right. About okay. 25 bucks. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't know if we we're sharing that, but yeah, about 25 bucks for a shirt. Um, and like I said, we'll, we'll go through PayPal. Um, I'll put it up on the Facebook uh, um, page yeah. and then also uh, continue to give you guys details if you're not on Facebook right here. Um, we're going to create a, a PayPal account for our um, our bank account that we uh, you know have for the podcast. And that way you can send that there. You can send us your size and then also your address and, yeah, and, and the part notes. of the notes. Yep. And it'll, it should be should be real simple and easy. We'll, we'll set a cutoff date. Um, don't know when that's going to be yet, so we won't even say it. But um, we'll shoot to, uh, you know, have those shirts shipped to you by like Christmas time. Does that sound fair? Yeah, I, th- I think what you do, uh, we'll, you, Lane like, will eventually have to put a deadline on that and sure. say like, "Hey, I need anybody who last call, you know, uh, get your orders in, and yep. then 
uh, you know, we'll try to get that going here mid fall. Yeah. And then they'll eventually get out to you hopefully before Christmas. Yeah. Um, and, and I can, I'll talk to Rob about that and I can help update you guys as that, as that happens, but yeah. the shirt's already been made. So it's as simple as him getting an order of, of sizes and then just going and printing more off. Right. It, it won't be a big deal. So yeah. Now we yeah. have our, our second batch because we're actually in the midst of ordering like right now as of October 5th. Um, we are ordering another yeah. batch of shirts for everyone who is at the elf tier. So that's part yes, of the issue. So, yeah, uh, not right. the issue, but it's a, it's a blessing and it's awesome. Yeah. So we are, uh, placing that order. I'm getting everybody's sizes by the fifth. So I'm going to private message everybody on Patreon and get your sizes. I've already got your addresses and then boom, we will send that out to you. Now, Moving forward, friend, uh, we have, and I've shared a couple of different designs. So basically... Yeah, Ezra was beaming at the party. He's going, you guys want to hear some of the different designs we have for tees? You want to hear? <laughs> we got, a, we got I, quite I a bit. I didn't spoil very many of them. All right. Well, I, and that's the kind of the, the fun thing, too, is that we get to, it's fun for us. It's surprise. probably not fun for you guys, but we can kind of tease that out a little bit. We yeah. can decide how we're going to reveal that. But the cool thing is, you know... Uh, one of the benefits of, of being an elf is you get this exclusive t-shirt. It's right. really, really cool. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's printed once. That's it. And there it is. That's it. So that's, that's kind of the cool thing. Um, to collect them all, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There, there you go. And who said that? Someone brought that up to collect them all. Who was saying that? I think it was me. Yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> who's the guy from Pokemon? You got to catch them all. I don't know. Lance Ryder. His name is. Yeah. That's his name. So, but, Chase uh, Ryder, D Sally. Yeah. Brian so, James. Anyways. Um, I think so, you know, every um, twice a year we're going to do that. And yep. we actually have maybe a surprise third drop uh, that Lynn and I have talked about doing. And so we're, we're not going to reveal when that is. Uh, it's just a surprise. And then, boom, we might send you guys something extra. So, mm -hmm. um, but we're guaranteeing at least two times a year that we're going to send that. And and they're pretty, Rob is awesome. He's a great He's graphic amazing, designer. Yeah. And, and uh, Lane is our artist. And so we work through those different things. So you're getting Lane's art in that as well. And you're getting the graphic design from Rob and so it's 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 really kind of neat. Plus, on top of that, you are getting uh, access to all of the extra podcasts that we do, mm -hmm. uh, which we're updating uh, this month. You know, Hobbit's Guide Home, uh, various different things there. We've got uh, there and back again, appendices, so on. Um, we also just recently updated our dis we added a Discord award mm -hmm. for our Hobbits and our Elves, and our Elves have that priority sort of chat. So when we go into the uh, Green Dragon Inn. Um, we uh, are able to kind of so you guys cool, when man. you speak elves need to you know we listen to elves <laughs> yeah, yeah. all right when an elf is speaking uh, it's 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 you know just don't answer both yes and no okay right exactly give some good <laughs> advice all right exactly elves. so I'm hoping the discord chat will be fun we're also going to make a server where anyone can join and and talk it doesn't matter if you're patreon or not uh, or a patron or not you can you can mm -hmm. hop in there and, and have some fun but we do have you know, that exclusive live sort of pre-show and post-show uh, that Lane, Lane and I would do. We'll post record dates in there, let you guys know when we're recording. Hopefully get on there and chat with some of you, and that mm -hmm. should be a lot of fun. So looking forward to that. Plus with those kind of like treasure boxes that go, at, uh, you know, biannually, you're, you're throwing in the Bywater Post too. Absolutely. Which throwing is, in the Bywater you'll Post get a, and a pin. You'll get, yeah. A, yeah, you'll get a physical document. Uh, uh, it's beautiful. It looks like a, an actual newspaper yeah. newsletter. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you also get uh, the digital copy of that as well. So something else that you can collect. Right. Um, and I just want to applaud you friend for like all the you, you, Ezra guys, the flannel wizard has been hard at work to, um, constantly I, he, I, he doesn't get enough credit for this constantly think of, of new ways to reward you um, uh, um, if you're on patreon new new things that we can give you and then also we're always always thinking about you know um, keeping some of that stuff exclusive because you know you're, you're you're paying for that you're supporting us but that's yeah. we want to reward you as well and then but also trying to figure out how to um, open certain things up to the entire entire book club so yeah it's it's fun to think about it's it's really like it's an awesome uh, uh, decision to to have before you, you know. To, it is, and and one uh, thing I want folks to remember is that it's an evolution for Lane and I. Like, yeah, we're blown away by the support. We're blown away by the amount of people away. that listen. And uh, we set off. You know, we started this whole thing just thinking it was going to be uh, us talking and having a good old time. It was a way for us to hang out, and yeah. so it has become so much more. And uh, that is all because of you. Yes, hundred uh, percent. That you listen, guys. and uh, and, and when, when you support us. It's, it's, it's actually opening up avenues that we never thought were possible. I mean, yeah. we, we, we literally, um, you know, are in talks, you know, with, um, with like Billy Boyd and stuff like that. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We're going to conventions and stuff. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Susie at one point was going to do something really cool for us, which I'm not going to reveal because we may have a chance oh, to do it later. Right. But Susie that's was right. at a convention, oh my gosh. was going to have a chance to do something really awesome for yeah. the group. And it's just like, I don't know, man, that, that is, it's just, it's so neat and we're so blessed. And, uh, 
Uh, so just, just be patient with us because we're, we're evolving. Uh, we're always open to feedback, you know, and, and we, we like to hear from you guys. So, you know, um, there's things that we're not perfect. Yeah, no, but we try and we work, we work hard. You're and, pretty and, damn uh, close. Well, yeah, it, it takes, it takes damn close to know, uh, damn close. I've never heard that expression. I mean, either. I just it. made it up. <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, enough of that. I, I don't, I don't like to ramble uh, you know, on about it a whole lot, but I do. You do like to ramble, but not about this. But not about yeah, this. That's I, why we're rambling. I just, but yeah. I felt like, you know, we have so many people who are patrons that yes. listen that I wanted to make sure that they understood what we were doing. Absolutely. You know, and Absolutely. I wanted to make sure that they understood that we have a Discord now and it's a chat room. There's text chat, so you can just text. You don't have to get in there and talk to anybody. Really You know, cool. you can just text. Um, if yep. you want to hop in the Green Dragon, you can actually, people like Chase and Callie could talk across the world. How cool is that? And I think it's really awesome. It's just a little more direct too than Facebook, isn't it? Yeah, it's much more informal. You don't have yes. to worry about everybody critiquing every little word. You can just kind of go back and forth yeah. in a conversation. It's almost like an instant messenger type of thing. That is so cool. Uh, so, you know, people are just jumping in with comments and stuff. So Man. you don't have to worry about the pressure of like, you know, because uh, I think some people are hesitant to kind of hop on Facebook and, and have something scrutinized or whatever. No, it's like it's in the chat and it, we move on. Like after mm-hmm. two or three minutes, it's like, OK, that's way that's lost up in the feed. And, you know, uh, what we've the, the conversation continues on yeah. and it's sort of neat to see it evolve. It, is, so, it really is. So there's that. But yeah. All right, guys, enough of that. Uh, check that out at uh, patreon.com forward slash up talking token and you can get all that goodness there. And uh, yeah, so. Awesome. Uh, time for uh, Weekly Well Wishes, formerly Fortnite Farewells. Uh, we will be back next week. Uh, but we want to thank you for, um, you know, I guess stepping out of the, stepping <laughs> yeah. off the river on the road. Or I was going to say uh, climbing out of the high seat for a second okay. um, uh, with us. Uh, our next episode, we'll be digging deep into chapter two of book three, The Writers of Rohan. That's right. If you like our podcast, don't forget to subscribe, like us, write a review, leave a comment, or send us a shadow fax. We'll see you in a Hobbit fortnight, and remember, Frodo lives. 